All right. Hope everyone's having an absolutely fantastic day. I have had a pretty good day. I've got no complaints whatsoever. Oh, hold on one sec. What's wrong, darling? Yep, I started streaming. Yep, okay, cool. Love it. Uh, give me just a second. Hey, there we go. Lights are on, camera's on. Fantastic. Let me pull up my chat. Dream Knife, what's going on, man? Hey, man, I've been curious about tyranny, but I'm just about to go to sleep. <laughs> no problem. It'll take us a few episodes to get through it, so you'll definitely get a chance to see what tyranny is like. Damas, what's up, man? Sorry I missed the Underworld stream. Hope you enjoyed it. I did, actually. I could uh, absolutely see myself doing a playthrough of that. I just don't think it's a good game for streaming, but I definitely think it's a game that I would play on my own, and I'm really excited for Underworld 2. Supposedly, they're going to make some graphical improvements, and I'm sure they'll make other changes. So that's definitely a game that I'll be checking out when uh, it's released. Cosmic, what's up, man? It's happening. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. That's fantastic. Also, to be here, dude. I don't know. I don't think you were on the live stream when I talked about it, but I, your figure did come. So I plan to take some pictures of it and make a post about it soon. It's really, really freaking cool, dude. Really appreciate you doing that. Um, I'm making some changes in my room. So that um, when I live stream, people will actually be able to see things behind me. And I'll definitely have your figure back there as one of the things. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to do that, man. Tito, what's up, man? Three, the abandonment was good. Managed to give Apex and Abyss a listen to. I listened to some Abyss in the uh, car. It sounded really good. I haven't gotten through, gotten through the whole album, but it definitely sounded uh, different. Fury, what's up, man? Now I call part of it lots of backseating. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't bother me. It's all good. Awaken, what's up, man? Underrated game, but yet another Obsidian game that likely won't get a sequel, along with Pillars 2. I agree with you that Tyranny probably won't get a sequel, but I'm holding out hope for Pillars 3. I think if Avowed does well, then Obsidian will be in a really good place to try to say, you all, uh, Microsoft should give us some extra money to do uh, Pillars 3. And... I personally think the success of Baldur's Gate 3 um, lives a lot more cachet to Obsidian to tell Microsoft, like, look, if y'all really, really helped us out and invested in us, we could do something incredible that would really, really make changes for your game division. And uh, Sawyer said that in order to do Pillars 3, he would want like a crazy budget, like a Baldur's Gate type budget in order for him to feel comfortable doing that. So it seems like he also wants to be able to go all the way. And I really, really hope that they're able to do that. Lennon, what's up, man? I'm on time for this one, but lost the Underrail run. No problem. Look, um, we'll probably end up doing another Underrail stream at some point. And if not, I, I'm absolutely going to be playing Underrail too. Like from what I saw of Underrail, it makes me excited uh, to see Underrail 2 for sure. So don't feel like you missed out. You're definitely going to get some more Underrail content. Sloan, what's up, dude? Hey, Slander. Glad to catch your stream again. Pumped to see some tyranny. Hope you're having a happy Easter. I'm having a very happy Easter. Thank you so much. Glad you're able to make a stream as well. I just finished Radrix Hold and Pillars of Eternity. Nice. It's so going. Lots of time spent studying the lore and think about the game mechanics. I had so much fun with Pillars of Eternity. When we get a specific release date for Avowed, we're probably going to play at least some of Dead Fire. We just got through with the stream last year, but honestly, I wasn't wholly satisfied with how that went. So I'd actually like really like another crack at it. So we'll probably play some more Dead Fire sometime towards uh, the end of the year. I'm a little bit annoyed. My family didn't tell me we're having Easter. Then they blame me for not being ready. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I thought Abyss was first. Three. Okay. All right. I'll do Apex first then. Sorry. Don't layer in self-finance. They do, but Obsidian definitely wouldn't be able to self-finance. So they would need some support from Microsoft. Okay. Tyranny. We did a vote on the channel. I even had Baldur's Gate 3 as one of the games that could be voted for. And even with Baldur's Gate 3 on the list, the, the community was absolutely clear. We wanted to stream Tyranny. So what's going to happen is we're going to do a full stream of Tyranny. I'm going to try to do as much of the content as humanly possible, get to 100% uh, as much as I can, but for those of you who've already played Tyranny, you know 100% really is impossible. You would have to play Tyranny two, maybe even three times 
to see all the content available, but I'll do everything I can in one playthrough. And then after we finish this playthrough, we're gonna do a Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode run, and that'll be full co-op. I'm gonna use the mod that allows me to bring in all of the party members at one time, and people will be able to jump in and out wherever they see fit. I'm really looking forward to that. I think it'll be a blast, and hopefully this Tyranny playthrough is a blast as well. So. If all that interests you and you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. There's a link to join our Discord down below. I definitely uh, recommend that you all join that as well. Should be really, really good times here. Uh, Black Fist, thank you so much for the $10 donation, dude. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate all the support. Okay, let me go ahead and spin up the game. So, do, 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 do. Boom, do. And YouTube is, and bam, here we go. And let's see. Why? Oh, okay, yep. We do hear stuff, so let me pull my chat back up real quick. One moment. There we go. Chat's back up. Game is up. Excellent. All right. Uh, we're going to do regular old normal. I don't feel the need to uh, do, do anything crazy here. Thank you. Except... For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos' final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos' ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos' minions. Tunan brings Kairos' laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the Fatebinders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fatebinders when Kairos' armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? Mm-hmm. And here we are. Uh, really like that opening. Feels like it uh, does a fantastic job of setting up the game world. Untrim Rugal, what's going on, dude? I love uh, what I play this game. Need to get back to it one day. Yeah, I absolutely recommend it. It's not a long game either, so uh, definitely, definitely recommend getting back into this. We're going to go... Uh, now we're gonna go there. Mail for sure. Um, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Previous, what did it say? In the Norman Empire, where you were born, men enjoy equal protections on the laws of the overlord Kairos. In the southern lands of Tears, only men may own their captain ships. Uh, so I think it's pretty much the same. Next. Oh, oh, that's right. This game is a pretty cool portrait. Blackula, what's going on, man? I didn't know there was a gold edition of the game. Yep, there sure is. Um, this is here. Uh, to be honest, I like the Dark Alliance style better. Uh, what do you mean the Dark Alliance style? And Lance Free, I hope they take on the world of darkness. What's going on, Nemo? Uh, a Vampire the Masquerade game by the Larian Studios would be incredible. We were talking about that a couple of streams ago. I don't know if they'd be good at going that dark, but I'd love to see them try. What's up, Daniel? How are you, man? I didn't know this game existed. Can't wait to see what it's like. What's going on, Ashes? Yeah, this is an absolutely fantastic game. Highly, highly recommend playing it. 
need to sit here and do KOTOR 3 because I love 2 over 1. Did I love 2 more than 1? That's a that's a hard uh, decision for me to make. I'll have to uh, see when... That's definitely a game we're going to live stream on the channel. So when we do that, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll circle back to how I feel about that. You might be right, though. Let's go there. <laughs> Got it. Mail. You must rest soon. Nah, I like aggressive. On it. What's this? Oh, you can put different tattoos or something. Ooh, and they're multicolored. Ooh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Uh, I've seen on the bar that you found the start of Larian's games to be that peak in which it would be the middle. Well, the world's peak happens to be in the mid-game, specifically Core City. Yeah, they mentioned Core City multiple times, that that's where a lot of the entertainment is. Dude's Quest of Expedition DLC as well. Interesting. Okay. Oh, hell no. Pillars, just before I discovered Pillars of Eternity. Nice. What's going on, Kirkus? Oh, what color of evil will he pick? Uh, I'm going to be all out evil. I don't think I've ever been all out evil in a live stream before. So I'm really curious what that experience will be like. To be honest with you, even though I'm, I'm creating this typical black looking type of character, uh, I'm going to try to uh, play this as close to the Joker as I possibly can. Like just flat out chaotic evil, laughing, making jokes and poking fun at people's misery and suffering the entire gameplay. That, that's what I'm planning to do. Crimson, what's up? I always love the premise of this game. Not enough games for you to start as a bad guy. I 100% agree. I think it's fantastic. I really like the map. This game has, it's got to be top five best magic systems I've ever seen in an RPG. I 100% agree with you, Sloan. 100%. 100%. Yep, the intro is fantastic. Player, what's going on? I have played this before, but I played it years and years ago. So... I don't remember any of the mechanics. I don't. Uh, I remember somewhat the story, but a lot of this is going to be new for me. So I'm going to be learning as I go. Third person, top down Diablo style. Oh, I've never liked real time with pause, even during the golden age of Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale. I, I'm cool with it, but I can go either way. I just like competent uh, um, gameplay systems because it's more philosophical. A hundred percent. I think uh, Kira. Your uh, your neutral Jedi party member, incredible. One of the most well-written party members I've ever experienced in a game. Cole, what's going on, man? I love your channel, bro. Gets me hype fighting all these different CRPGs, RPGs, etc. Much respect. Thank you so much, dude. Glad you've been enjoying the channel, man. Appreciate the support. Couldn't keep up, unfortunately. Well, it's pretty old now, so your computer should hopefully be fine now. Doodlebug, what's up, man? The male voice is done by Matthew Mercer. Uh, oh, you know what? It seems like Obsidian has a really good relationship with Critical Role. I get the feeling that a lot of their um, uh, games and voices are done by Critical Role actors. Okay, let's see. Um, does it only let you do a tattoo on... So wait, that's both arms. This is only one arm. <laughs> Let's scroll through this. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. So some of them are, all, are set up differently. Interesting. Ooh. See, I'd like the snake if it wasn't on his legs. I want it to be on like his arms where everybody sneezes and sees him for the snake he is. Where's the. Uh, let's go back to the one who was. Yeah, sure. Double. Oh, and it's got some on the back. Oh, wow. Oh, that's kind of like all around? I actually, I'm actually feeling that. Uh, see, I, I need like a brighter red. I guess that's as bright as it gets. That's fine. Uh, I, it makes it almost like he's he's got blood all around him. But what's going to match well with that? I need a brighter, that red and blue. You know what? I'm actually kind of, I actually kind of like that. I actually kind of like that. That's okay. All right. Um, Darmo, what's up? I've never played charity. So glad to see it. That's awesome. I hope you enjoy me. Nemic, what's going on, man? Yeah, it's got really cool graphics. Really, really cool graphics. Um, is this Obsidian's best game since New Vegas? New Vegas came out after KOTOR 2, right? So it was this. Which came out first, Tyranny or Pillars of Eternity 2? I think I like Pillars of Eternity 2 more than I like Tyranny. But uh, I definitely like it more than Outer Worlds. 
and uh, we'll see about uh, a vowel, right? Uh, offhand, from what we've seen, I'm gonna say that I like it more than a vowel as well. Um, so unfortunately, I feel like they've got a really, really nice diversity of portraits. Oh, you know what? I was going to say that they don't have any good portraits for black men who also look evil, but I guess this guy could go either way, right? He could be the sly smuggler type, or he could be the evil dude. And you know what? He's using a bow, which is what I want to do. So we're going to go with that guy. I think that works. All right. How did you join the army? So basically, you get to choose your history that determines what you were doing before you got became part of Kairos' army. Uh, so we got... Pitfire, we got Hunter. I'm gonna go with Lawbreaker, most likely. Accused of a crime you most certainly did commit, you stood before Tunan, the adju adjudicator, Archon of Justice, and argued your case with eloquence and conviction. Oh yeah, this fits perfectly. Impressed by your logic, reason, and confidence, he found you guilty anyway. <laughs> it is rumored that he selects many of his agents from his prisoners. Who better to catch the wicked than those versed in such ways? In his mercy, he offered you the choice of two sentences, decades languishing in prison or a lifetime serving him in the court of fate binders. The choice was an easy one. And instead of seeing the inside of a cell, you were trained in letters and numbers, magic and war. The laws you once broke are now yours to interpret and enforce. Super cool. All right, that'll work. Not a lefty. What up, dude? How are you, man? It's a damn shame we never got a sequel for this. I 100% agree. Honestly, as much as I think Pillars of Eternity 2 was a very good game, I would much rather have uh, them have put resources into a Tyranny 2. But Tyranny did so poorly, that was just, that was just not going to happen. Not going to happen. Mm, tyranny came first. Okay, interesting. Double stream today? No, this is my first stream today, Queen. Uh, but my last stream might have uh, ended after midnight. That's my, maybe why you see two streams that are listed for the day. But nope, this is my first stream today. Get food. What's up, man? Got to go. Can't pretend like I'm sitting forever. <laughs> I understand. I understand completely. And when Pillow Attorney 1, Tyranny, Pillow Attorney 2. Okay, so yeah, in that case, I put Deadfire over Tyranny, but I do love Tyranny. I think Tyranny is absolutely fantastic. I've never played Neverwinter Nights 2, Darmo. I heard great things about it, but those graphics look so old, like I'm not I'm not sure whether I enjoy it, and I definitely don't feel like it'd be a good game for streaming. Okay. Um, what do I want to specialize in? How does this work? The short bow is a weapon of choice for those who choose to attack from a distance, avoiding direct engagement with their enemies. Um, that's actually really nice. Now, oh, that that's right. So you can choose spells if you want to start with a spell. Well, I definitely want to have a bow. Oh, I even like the way I look. I forgot the, the style of armor for this game. Super, super cool. Okay, so you choose an ability. I could get heart shot. Delay your aim to focus on hitting the target's heart. Gain additional accuracy for this attack and leave the target bleeding or... Target your enemy's feet with a range attack, hobbling them if successful. I think I'm going to go with this. And then what? Do you get to do another option? Is, is that what, how it works? Okay. Secondary expertise. So what happens if I choose short bow again? Uh, oh, it allows you to just take the other short bow ability. Hmm. Marina, what's going on? I never got far in this. Why didn't you get far in tyranny? Uh... I forgot to tell you how javelins. Yeah, that's super cool, right? Usually, I can't remember the last game that let me use javelins. Don't lurk and play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Lynn. But I was going to end up being shovelware for Game Pass. <laughs> I'm hoping for a little bit better. Elric, what's up, man? I got the Dead Ringer Mystic Spearhand weapon from the dragon that attacks Mel. The one with the red things all over. Uh, it's because I was a thief. Nice. So I take it you're enjoying Spearhand so far then? Um, we could take hobble, but I kind of feel like I want a spell, right? Because you can add the spells onto your weapon. But you know what? You know, no, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna stick with this for now. Wait. You learn this ability, and then next. Okay. Oh, I could choose his colors too, so he could go black. 
Or he could specialize in red. What I do for the tattoos? Red and blue, right? Ooh, that's not bad looking. Yeah! Banner customization. What, what looks the closest to someone who's an absolute psycho? Uh, none of this screw. Ooh. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. What if I put this in all red? Um, how about that in red and then the light blue? Interesting. Let me scroll through this again. Any of this give up? Ooh, what's that? Oh, I kind of like that. What's that about? That's interesting. You can't even tell exactly what it is. Which Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Counting my kills? Counting my kills. Let's see. I don't like that blue right behind it, though. Actually, here. How does it look with that? Uh, no, I prefer... You know what? I actually kind of like that, which makes me wonder. I'm a fan, and you know what? Let me go back here. So as close as it's gonna get, probably, yeah. We're gonna prefer red and then into the yellow. Let's look red, the dominant color there. Uh, banner, yeah, this works, this works, this works. Never Win a Nice 2 is the best paced CRPG I played. Not to mention the expansion, Master of the Betrayer is the best story. I've heard so much about Master of the Betrayer that it, apparently it's incredible. Yeah, I enjoyed Never Win a Nice 1 and 2 back in the day, but I can't recommend them with confidence. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they make good streaming games. I might have to try it, though. Oh, you always get distracted? I, I can understand that, Marnia. Tyranny's story is interesting, though. Yep, for sure. Number one, nice one was actually my first major disappointment from Bioware. Really? Yes, users have made some great content at the time, but that does not excuse what was a god awful uh, orig the original game. It wasn't all that great. Interesting. Glycerin, what's up, man? Still haven't played. It looks good, though. Tyranny is fantastic. I played it before, although I barely remember it, so a lot of this stuff will be new, but I highly recommend it for sure. The henchman system rather than proper party me mechanics ruins the gameplay. So then, not a lefty, do you feel like it'd be better to just go to straight never, straight into Never Win a Nice 2? Do you really need to play the first one? Nesho, what's up, man? This game has so many cool things about it. BG3 money, tyranny would be dope. I would absolutely buy that day one. Day one. One of the best D&D campaigns out there. One of the coolest evil endings. Really? So an evil playthrough is a lot of fun in Never Win a Nice 2? Hmm. I fear for a while, especially since they just added... Diablo 4 <laughs> to Game Pass. <laughs> Any color scheme that isn't red, black, and metal is cherished. <laughs> you have to make a purple and green if you're... Oh! You know what? You know what? That's a good call. Oh, wait. Was there a noose? I didn't see a noose. Oh, but see, you know, for me, the moon and the sun kind of ruins it. It needs to have like dripping blood or something like that. But actually, you're kind of right. What what is this color? It's purple and purple and green. Purple and green. I didn't even think about that, but you're hundred percent right. Um, so let's see, green, purple. That doesn't look right. So let's go with green and put the background purple. Ha ha ha! That actually looks hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Let's switch this up a little bit. Um, I think I like no, but his dominant color is purple, isn't it? I don't know, but I think this looks. Uh, you know what? No, we're gonna go with that. And then this. Boom, purple and green it is. I 100% agree. I 100% agree. Oh, you can change his hair's color too. Uh, but not into anything. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It should be red. It should be, uh, no, no, no. His hair color is green, but they don't have a green option. Huh. It's funny. His hair color is red, but he, it gives him this little white in the middle. That's interesting. Um, we'll leave it like that. We'll leave it like that. Um... And they should reset tomorrow. <laughs> nice. The dead ring of weapon does fire me plus physical and magic damage, so I can kill for the in-game weapon. Yo, that's awesome. Never one of nights has some solid RP servers. Uh, 
still like Ireland. Interesting. What's going on, Hokity? Things could play when I get back. Sounds good, Tito. Take care. Number one, nice two would definitely be a better game to stream, though the OC is not top tier. If you want, what do you mean when you say OC? Uh, if you want to stream number one, nice, play the Alund Saka. Interesting. It's trying to be more accessible, so it introduced recommended choices in character creation level up focused on a single character because that worked for Dota. Interesting. He was original Red Hood, so it makes sense. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll go with that. Main. Attributes. Okay, I might completely screw this up because I only barely remember it. So we've got might. Determines the physical strength of a character. Increased might leads to more powerful attacks, strong abilities, as well as increased the endur and the endurance defense. Okay. Um, One second, my patch is outside my door. Apparently, you want something. Happy Easter, Pastor. How are you? She's good. She's feeling much better today. Much, much better. Absolutely, but I'm actually uh, I'm actually live streaming right now. Can I call you back later tonight? Will do. Thank you, Pastor. Yep. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> this is what I get for being a heathen and not going to church today. My wife and I we both it was, uh, brutal yesterday, so we both ended up waking up late. <laughs> OC equals original campaign, the term used in never one a nice community. Oh, 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 okay. Benjamin, what's up? Yeah, I'm a fan of this game as well. Okay, so let's see. Attack and ability strength plus endurance defense. What does that mean? Endurance defense. Endurance resist attacks on the internal physical systems of the character. Poison, disease, and stun. Interesting. All right, let's do that. And then let's see, finesse. The finesse attribute. Can you respect in this game? I can't remember. Finesse attribute describes a character's physical and mental precision. Finesse is used to determine accuracy of attacks and spells. So that sounds like something that's important. What's quickness? Determines how often a character can use their abilities and spells in combat, reducing cooldown duration. That also sounds important. Vitality determines a character's physical health and their strength of personality. It also increases the will defense. Let's see, you could take this down to two, to 10, to eight rather, if I wanted to. Let's see, which attribute describes a per character's mental acuity, their ability to observe their environment and pick up on clues. Which is used to increase spell strength as well as increase the magic defense. Let's go ahead and dump that. Resolve determines the character's ability to endure physical and mental challenges. Resolve is the primary attribute used to derive the endurance, will, and magic defenses. It also increases the durations of afflictions applied by the character. I don't think I care about that either. So this gives me a few extra points to work with. Dragon's Lair, what's up? Man? This is a great game. Best prologue in any game I've ever played. Yeah, it's fantastic. Really, really like it. Good RPG to stream would be Kingdoms of Amalur. I actually played that way before I had a channel. I can see myself streaming that for sure. When are we getting the Wrath, uh, Wrath of the Righteous Last as, uh, as Lanti Unfair Run? Never. <laughs> I do not play Unfair for Outcat games. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And personally, I hate uh, those type of runs where you only have one save. Super, super irritating to go through those. I could see myself doing a Last as Lanti core run a wrath of the righteous but uh unfair never happened never 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 definitely decided to watch this play through slider thank you blackfish appreciate it man appreciate it believe you can respect after act one got you got you vitality links to uh uh to will defense yes it does all right um quickness i feel like i should have some good quickness as well so Mike, finesse and quickness. We'll probably respect later on when I have a remember some of this stuff and have a better idea about some of the work. But 
For now, hopefully this will do. Okay, I've got 20 points to work with. I, oh, you know what? I remember lore being super important. I remember lore being super important. Lore skill determines the character's ability to decipher information and put together clues from fragments of information. This skill is critical for magic users who wish to learn new runes to power their spells. But this magic system is so fantastic, you want it even if you're not a mage. Lore is also used in dialogue to determine what you know about the history of the world. Order to impress others with your intelligence. So this is based upon wits, right? You need wits in order to do that. Is wits one of the ones I dumped? No, well, uh, yeah, I did dump wits. Ah, brutal. Brutal. I'm man enjoying some Chinese food because I forgot today was a holiday and didn't get my grocery shopping done. <laughs> that sucks. Or that was next to yours looks more evil, I think, Slam. Okay, I'll check it. Keith, what's up, man? How are you? Oh, the charity streaming last. Yeah, what's going on, Kung Shu? Going for as evil as possible. Oh, so they don't stop you. So you could just dump all your points into this if you wanted to, huh? All right, you get 20 points. I definitely want plenty. Let's say, let's go up to 40 here. I don't care about why are these things next to it? Is it saying this skill is recommended because of your training in short bow? Uh, so the die skill defends against range attacks from bows, javelins, or magic spells. I feel like I probably need a pretty decent score there. So 30 here. And maybe 30 here. I think that's what we'll do for now. What's this? This, the subtrue skill, determines the character's ability to move unseen through their environment to detect and manipulate hidden traps and devices. Mm. And to open locked doors and uh, locked chest and doors. It is also used in dialogue to determine your ability to deceive or trick the person you are speaking with. Mm. And I get more in this because I've got short bolt twice and I've got lawbreaker. So I kind of like that. You know what? Maybe I let's go third let's go 35 oh and in fact it sits at 36 you know what you got enough points we'll go 40 here you know what you know you got enough points too uh i'm concerned about lore i really need to make sure i can make use of that what you call it that um the magic system oh that he looks more evil than this one yeah, but you know what? He's passable for evil, and he's using a bow. So it's closer to the type of character that I'm creating, whereas this guy, uh, he's using a sword. This guy doesn't look evil. This guy could pass for evil, and he's focusing on magic, but this guy looks like evil in a clever kind of way, which is more of what I'm going for. So we're going to stick with that. We're going to stick with that. Yeah, lore is important for every build. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Lords for spellcasting. It's not just for spellcasting. It's also for reading the runes and applying the runes to your weapons and things that you're doing. And I'm more than likely not going to have the uh, lore guy, the guy with the quill, because I'm going to be picking a bunch of evil dialogue, which means that one of the other evil aligned party members will have to be the one mainly dealing with lore. It's probably going to end up being me. Destiny, what's going on? Thanks for the $2 donation. I appreciate it. So good to see you. It's been so long. Best to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to see you on the stream as well. You know, Kings of Alon, Amalon, re reckoning I'd like for you to go pure mage class. You must save tons of gold. <laughs> okay. That might be what I do. Uh, is Kingdom of Amalon worth it now? It's pretty boring if I remember correctly. I don't remember how I thought about it. Mr. Loser, what's going on, man? How are you? JV chaotic we rolling with the chorus. Actually, we're rolling for ourselves. We uh we don't care about anybody. Points available, zero. Okay. Conquest. Selecting a conquest option will allow you to play through Kairos's Conquest of the Tears, choosing how your character was involved in the invasion. This gives you the most control over the starting state of the game and how other facts will react to your character. 100 percent This is what we're going to do. I think it's an absolutely fantastic way to start the game. Loincoff is evil. Another kind of way. 
That other guy with the green glow looked lawful evil. Which one of you all talking about? Oh yeah, this guy. Yep, 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 I agree. But he looked right. He looks lawful, like harsh lawful evil. He looks like a guy that nothing's funny to him. Whereas this one, he looks like he could be chaotic evil and that he enjoys a good joke, which is closer to the type of character that I'm going for. Why won't let me? Can you go back to where I was? Oh, you have to press next from here? Okay, that's fine. Conquest? All right. Uh, Dragon Ball Pilot looks so awesome. Mm hmm how the helmets look on them. Is this game a D100 system with hits, greatest crits, and misses like those returning, or is it different? I believe it's similar. Me and Coast of the Black X Cop from Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> yeah, player. Uh, I remember I don't rank Amalur like really, really high as far as RPGs, but I don't remember why. It could be that you're right that the uh, combat gets a little repetitive. All right, next. As it fades to black. All the world has fallen to Kairos, and now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos's armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment. The mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late. Conquest. During the conquest, you will decide your character's actions during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the Tears respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. So the way it works, basically, I think it goes through, uh, like they mentioned, this is the start of the invasion of the tears. And I think it goes through about three years and you'll have different options for how you dealt with each of the situations you were confronted with. And these decisions have massive, massive consequences throughout the entire game. Somebody else said earlier that they feel like this is one of the best prologues to a game all time. I agree 100%. In fact, it's hard to imagine a prologue for a game that is more impactful than what you get in Tyranny. These decisions matter quite a bit. The bastard city stood on the northern border between Kairos' empire and the Tears. Built upon a natural arbor at the crossroads between realms, the city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was a little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking this city would send a message to the rest of the tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable. So this is the cool thing as well. Every time you have one of these decisions, not you're going to have multiple ways to address it and each of these ways will have multiple options for you you can side with either this the disfavored or the scarlet course really really cool stuff so this option says gates of judgment the armies of kairos took the battle to the gates of judgment trumpeting the opening call of the conquest of the tears the two armies the disfavored and the scarlet course brought their distinctive sense of order and chaos to the assault you went to battle alongside the army whose approach best suited your strengths. Or you could infiltrate the tears. History will remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with advanced units of both armies preparing for the coming war. The Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join, right? So you can choose how the Bastard City would fall. So if you could uh, go with the disfavor, which is going to make you uh, make that leader like you a little bit more. 
um i'm playing joker i think joker likes the idea of infiltrating this area so i'm going to do that and i'm going to side with the scarlet chorus this favorite is basically lawful evil scarlet chorus is chaotic evil and we're definitely going for chaotic in this playthrough uh the anarchist pass interesting concept but it was on the rougher side from what i remember <laughs> Starting the game with Kaku is so awesome. Yep, love that you're established to be important from the starting line and you get to choose why people should care about who you are. Absolutely. I think they did a, a fantastic job with it. Vandal, what's going on? I played a little of Tyranny. Honestly, period, Pillars is a lot better. It didn't grab me for some reason. I do agree that Pillars is better, but I, I think uh, Tyranny is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't gotten a chance to play through it, I think you definitely should. The alternative medicine. <laughs> I love this game. What's going on, Random? Yeah, I'm a big fan of it as well. Looking forward to going through this uh, uh, playthrough. First prologue ever. I'm intrigued. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this prologue make, is a big deal. Also has a great opening. Not that it makes me feel some type of way, but the, okay, I know what I do now in this open world with a basic idea of the story. Yep. Yep. I, I feel like Dragon's Dogma 2 does a great job of making you care, of making you say, okay, this is a situation that I need to deal with. Tyranny and Premise is significantly better than Pillars Returning 2 in particular. It's just nowhere near as fleshed out a game. Mm -hmm. I honestly think Tyranny 2 with Pillars Returning 2's resources pumped into it would have been great. I 100% agree. I, I would love to see a second Tyranny. Love to see that. Love to see that. Boss Page, what's going on, man? How are you? All right. You join the Scarlet Corps as they raided villages and small towns, conscripting every able-bodied man and woman in the army of the voices of Narat. Emphasize the rewards of conscription and enslavement over wanton bloodshed. Apparently, his soldiers needed the reminder. The howling mobs of the Scarlet Corps found easy pickings among the villages and frontier towns. Rallying an experienced gang under your control, you flooded the unprotected settlements with a deluge of bloodthirsty soldiers, rounding up the innocent for merciless rites of conscription. The young and infirm alike received makeshift weapons, and examples were made of all who challenged your forces. Bolstered with fresh recruits, your army gathered strength for the invasion to come. All right. So since I did that, it uh, it removes the other option, right? So I could have gotten specific things for doing it this way instead. But now that's completely gone. And again, this is the prologue before any of the game happens. So it's going to impact significantly how people feel about you. Now you have two choices. So you can contain the fire. The fiercest opponents in the Bastard City were the mages of the School of Wild Wrath. Too barbaric to use their power responsibly, the unbridled practitioners needed to be stopped. How did you trick the hot-tempered mages into their own undoing? Or you can do Inside Agent. With the border garrison captured by your disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos' armies and lurked in the shadows of the Bastard City. You decided that converting one of the locals to Kairos' side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. Even though this seems like the one that uh, the Scarlet Course is dealing with more, I like this because it's all about um, convincing people, twisting them to my ends, corrupting them. I, I, I like the idea of that. So we're going to do that. And we're going to start with the Scarlet Course again. You came to an arrangement with a well-connected smuggler who knew how to sneak agents of the Scarlet Course behind the city walls. The Scarlet Course were better operatives than soldiers, and this work required a subtle touch. After accepting his deserved payment, the smuggler uncovered a long-forgotten tunnel that intersected with the sewers of the Bastard City. Armed with maps of the subterranean layout, your Scarlet Corps allies fanned out to occupy various city districts undercover. They spent the ensuing weeks murdering key officials and sabotaging defenses wherever possible, weakening the tier's capital under the very noses of its leaders. Notice, we don't have any good aligned options. There's no option that says, hey, <laughs> we're going to just uh, uh, not do this or unite everybody or, you know, be the good guys here. Like, no, you've got to decide what's the best evil related option that fits with your particular character in the beginning. Once you get into the game, you can absolutely play as a more chaotic, good, lawful, good character if you want to. But at up front, you're completely under Kairos' control. So you've got to come into this game being looked at as the evil, tyrannical character. There's no way out. True, but it's, 
it's again down to resources if tyranny had areas like nekataka and fort daylight it would feel a lot more realized the world a hundred percent a hundred percent you are drowned you're actually connected because they seem to instantly know you also i most prefer starting as a slave with no memory than a person from a small village like dd1 yeah they made some really interesting um narrative decisions for dd2 not enough evil games that are done well. Tyranny 2 would be dope. 100%. How did Underrail go last night? I really enjoyed Underrail. I, I'm definitely, definitely going to play Underrail 2. I just don't think Underrail 1 is a good uh, live streaming game. So we might do one or two se more sessions of that, but I don't think I would do a full playthrough. It'll be interesting to see what Stygia does with the sequel. Here, any sides for your companions in this game? I expect immediate brine treatment. <laughs> we not with none of that drag place yet. Absolutely good food. <laughs> What's going on, Tom? I had this game, but I never started it. This will get my appetite up for it until I finish Dragon's Dogma 2 at least. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm a fan of it. All right. Betrayal of the Bastard City. Your tactics of infiltration placed you in the Bastard City ahead of the main armies. Your work softened the city defenses for the arrival of Kairos' forces. But you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the Bastard City? You could... Um, you challenged the... Uh, you could duel... The uh, you challenge the commander of the Bastard City, so yeah, duel the city marshal. The disfavor which to spare soldiers' lives for the battle ahead and civilian lives for occupation, and this allows you warriors' respite a negative 50% damage for 12 seconds and an additional 15% health for every three seconds for 12 seconds. Interesting, or we could go with um. The Scarlet Chorus and incite a riot, spreading the word of Kairos. You converted the poor and disaffected into the army of the Scarlet Chorus. Once the death settled, the army wished to bolster their troops with these sleeper cells, which gives you searing palm. Gather heated energy into your hands and release it into a foe. The target ignites in flame, burning over time. Or you could spread fear through assassination. Keep it to the shadows. You eliminated the leaders of the Bastard City one by one. Doing this once per encounter, you can get plus 100% graze deflection, negative 100 accuracy, plus 200% dot, plus 200 dots, plus 200 pairing. That's interesting. Create a cloud of obscuring shadows and dust for a short duration. Enemies that use physical attacks against you have a significantly increased chance to miss. During this time, your attacks will also be less effective. Eh. I kind of don't want that, but. I like the idea of assassinating all the leaders of the city one by one on my own. So we're going to go with that. Take care, Queen. Always good to see you. Have a good one. It's really hard to be the bad guy in RPGs nowadays. Tyranny nails it. Yep, I 100% agree. What's going on, Barbos? Tyranny drawing twice as many people as Underrail. <laughs> Interesting. All right, it's almost 20%. So if it gets that low, imma immaculate head now. Okay, no problem. Evil as cookies. <laughs> you prefer to learn slant and then maybe make a video to audit. Yep, yeah, it's probably right, Edward. And I don't know it's not as many pixels. All about the Scarlet Chorus. You like, you like it, Benjamin? <laughs> we'll side with them a little bit, but at the end of the day, we're going to be independent. Problem fighting and killing people video games. You probably do your best when ordered to conquer a city state, too. It's all just a game of challenge. The city is. Mm hmm. Philip, what's going on, man? I see you playing this. Is it your first time you played it before? I played it before, but it was way back when it first launched. We had a um, poll on Discord to find out which game the channel wanted me to stream the most, and they decided on Tyranny. So here we are. Paradox players purging planets to make a mining district cassette. <laughs> Dishonored or death. <laughs> What's up, Johnny? Lurking. Just want to say I love the channel. Happy to see it grow the way it is. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate that, man. All right, some deaths were quiet and unnoticed, while others were gruesome beyond words. As a wave of murder overtook the city's elite, your deeds swelled in infamy. Well before the armies arrived, no one in the Bastard City felt safe in their homes, much less behind their walls. By the time Kairos' forces crested the horizon, the city was fearful enough to throw open the gates and welcome their new protectors. That, that is very consistent with who it's supposed to be, okay? So that's that first wave of the war, how we took the Bastard City. So now the Bastard City is done. 
and we can still choose something else. So we finished the Bastard City. The question becomes, where are you going to move on to? So you can move on to the Apex area or Lethian's Crossing. The battles, the Bastard City set on to a new state of normalcy with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tenen sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' conquest, either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethane's Crossing or as a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Um, ooh, both of these kind of appeal to Joker. Um, let's see. Judge and overseer. You know what? Um, uh, uh, right now, he wants more blood. So we're going to go to Apex. So you can only choose one of them. So since I've come to Apex, I don't get to choose, make uh, decisions about what happens with Lethian's Crossing. And that's gonna affect the reactivity I get once we're in that area. Rob, thank you so much for the gifted membership, dude. Always good to see you, man. Ninja, you're a, a member of the channel now. Congratulations. What's up, dude? Destroyer, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm gonna hope Larian puts more effort into that next game when you want to be evil we'll see we'll see uh i like more than lawful neutral path for tyranny like there are honestly multiple paths for tyranny that make a lot of sense lawful neutral is great you can go the evil route or you can go flat out good i feel like this game gives you nice reactivity regardless of how you try to play it rob thank you so much man for the uh, additional um gifted membership anton you're a member of the channel now thank you so much for the support dude appreciate it man hope you're having a good sunday Uh, Florian, what's going on? How are you? I think I should play Tyranny again. I highly recommend Tyranny Destroyer. I think it's an absolutely fantastic game. The mountain nation of Apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian, stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scarlet course had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunan assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory, as well as keeping an eye on both armies. All right, so now this is about how you're going to take Apex. And again, you get two options. One, the Disfavor sent their most destructive ally to crush Edgering Fort. Cairn, Archon of Stone, buried the stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding mountains. The Scarlet Chorus were promised captured enemies for recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. The Koros demanded compensation. That's one option. Another option, a school of water mages loyal to the Tears men posed a substantial threat. The disfavored wished to annihilate the school, while the Scarlet Chorus insisted on capturing the mages, wishing to learn of their craft. Hmm. I am not sure which one I want to do. This is a good question. So far, I think the closer terms of grand scale evil in this game gets off a modern game would be Rogue Trader. Even BG3 didn't capture a sense of scale for me in terms of malevolence. Yeah, um, I do think Rogue Trader does a better job with evil playthroughs than BG3. You can unite and turn everyone against your ruler as a last bastion of good. It's possible, super hard, but it's there. It's there. You can possibly do it. And I think that's super cool in a game like this. What's going on, Jork? What's going on? I haven't played Tyranny, but I hear it's pretty good. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I definitely recommend this game. Definitely, definitely recommend this game. Water Mages or Archon of Storm. The course demanded compensation. You upheld the Scarlet Course's claim and demanded that the youngest his favorite scouts join the course to settle the debt. Mm. Or what's the you saw an order in the Mage Elders taken alive for interrogation? Ah. Sure, interrogation information and that that uh, goes more along with my character. I'll take it. Though countless lives were lost, taking the mages into custody, the Scarlet Chorus praised your name as they dragged the beaten elders of the school to the voices of Narat's tent. As a wave of screams and incoherent pleas reached their crescendo, the Scarlet Chorus soldiers outside cheered for their archon. The disfavored adjourned to their camp in grim silence, claiming the course lacked the will and desire to fully wipe out all traces of the enemy school. That's one option. All right, now, when Kairos' forces captured a celebrated enemy hero, the armies bickered over his fate. The disfavored wanted him set free to convince his peers to 
of Kairos's mercy. The Scarlet Chorus wanted him flayed and staked as an example. Hmm. Hoping to break the siege, Scarlet Chorus agents poisoned the Apex water supply in secret. Days later, uninformed, his favorite scouts died of illness. Outraged by the failure of communication, the disfavored demanded that the Chorus agents be turned over to them for punishment. This looks like a uh, Joker acid, and he always enjoys uh, 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 a good prank. I think we're definitely going to go with this. Good food. Thank you so much for becoming a member, man. Glad you've been enjoying the, uh, the content enough for you to decide to want to join. Appreciate you. Um, Alpha Protocol is such a, a classic. Janky as fuck, but so good. So you all mentioned that game in my Discord, actually, and I see that it's available on GLG now. I was thinking about playing it, but it's another game where I'm like, it might be a little too old for me to stream, but it is like spy stuff, right? And... Um, and I feel like that might be kind of cool and interesting to see. So maybe I'll like purchase it and we'll play one or two episodes, see how you all like it. But I never played it. So I was interested in experiencing the game for sure. Yeah, boss page, I'm playing as Joker. I love being evil. I definitely want to run back through the Fable games before the new Fable comes out. Good playthroughs aren't often written that well either. Themes of morality are very challenging to explore. This is true. JV, I uh, I have played Wasteland 3. That's another game that I absolutely want to play on the channel because I didn't get that perfect ending. My understanding is there's an ending of Wasteland 3 where everybody just gives up at the end and they don't even fight back against you. And that and that's what I want to try to get. So we're absolutely going to play through that game. In fact, when I play through it, I'm going to use uh, longtime channel members. I'm going to make them my party members. <laughs> Is there, but I consider it similar to tyranny in that it's very hard to not mess up a good playthrough. Yep, 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 yep. Well, you don't side with the evil guys. I 100% agree. Yeah, Tom, we're definitely poisoning the well. <laughs> Slop on my laundry. Welcome back, Abandonment. Yeah, Benjamin, we're going to play it. Alpha Protocol sucks in a very interesting way. <laughs> Why you say that, Nemo? <laughs> Alpha Protocol had serious bug issues. You may regret streaming it. Oh, really? Still about spell force. Uh, since I know you'll likely enjoy Heroes of Might and Magic. Yeah, uh, I haven't forgotten about Spellforce. It's a, a buddy mess, but the plot keeps you in. Not that good plot, just fun. Hmm. I have to dust tyranny off myself. I recommend it, Rob. I think it's fantastic. Oh, yeah, there's a new fable coming out, Queen. They did a trailer for it last year. So I think it's supposed to come out this year, in fact. Other than that, though, we have no, we don't have any information about how it plays, what it's supposed to be in it, none of that. I can't wait to get exploded. <laughs> nah, I wish I, I was a long time. <laughs> Our protocol is awesome. Like, the game is very badly made and a lot of it is very frustrating, but it also tries things no other game has really tried. I keep hearing that, that Alpha Protocol does some unique things. What do you all mean? What does Alpha Protocol do that most other games just don't do or don't do nearly as well? You denied the complaint. Tragedies happen in war, and the act was not targeted with intent of the disfavored. The reality was more honest than the disfaction the disfavored so wanted. <laughs> Your ruling swept the deceased soldier's unit into a rage, which nothing short of Gravin Ash's intervention kept from escalating to violence. After tempers cooled over a period of weeks, the disfavored struggled to forge an open communication with their allies in the course. Their attempts were met with silence and distrust. The Scarlet Course nominated you to negotiate with the realm of Apex representatives and convinced them to surrender, trusting in you to explain their inevitable defeat in terms they will understand. How did you orchestrate the surrender of the enemy? Taunting the Queen of Apex into striking you under a banner of truce, you baited the Queen of Apex into a duel and slew her, frightening her vassals into submission. The Scarlet Chorus urged you to show the Overlord's strength by any means necessary. During peace talks, a well-placed insult goaded the Queen of Apex into striking you. You responded to the slight by challenging her to a duel. Though the Queen was skilled in battle, your field experience outmatched her court training. As her body lay cooling on the ground, you demanded that her followers kneel before the Overlord's banner. Unable to rise above the fear of the moment, the remaining leaders capitulated, surrendering the valley to Kairos' forces. And that's it. Apex is taken. But you missed out on some other options that were potentially there. 
one more time you get to select an option but this time you have to select you have to choose between three different places the land of apex finally rested in the hands of kairos's forces the scarlet chorus paused to revel in victory while the disfavored prepare for the next fight affording themselves but an evening's rest kairos's armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers the disfavored and scarlet chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year your distinguished reputation in kairos's military let the choice of your next destination yours to make so you could go to stalwart or uh so let's see stalwart with its easily defended position and rich military tradition the realm of stalwart was the most formidable realm in the tiers Kairos's conquering gaze fell upon the Vellum Citadel, its treasures, its knowledge, its secrets, or Azor. Kairos dispatched the Archon of Stone to subjugate the nation of, of Azor. Joker is interested in information, secrets. He wants to know everything, so we're going to go there. Which means we miss out on the other two. I also want to know about Alpha... Uh, protocol alpha protocol had acceptable romance <laughs> nice so it's a full-on spy rpg complete with skill tree character creation that was made by obsidian right around the time of new vegas hmm what's wrong prodigal dog why you say no my queen <laughs> my favorite but handle bet better than most the romances okay the story is just incredibly reactive really that's the gimmick Gift food. Thank you so much for the gifted membership, man. Wow, you become a member and then immediately start gifted memberships. I appreciate it. Lord, you're a member of the channel now. Congratulations. Um, it's not turn-based. Third-person action. The choice you made vastly affected the rest of the game based on the order you did them. Oh, really? So not just you making a choice, but the order in which you made choices. Getting the story off by straight up killing the leader of a nation and demanding our countrymen surrender. Can't top that kind of character establishment. Ooh. Much of what made Alpha Protocol, uh, what much of what Alpha Protocol did has become commonplace nowadays. Every skill upgrade being varied and valuable. More complicated role-playing consequences. But it was original back then. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, you're talking about the queen I massacred? Because <laughs> you killed Nidor alive for my favorite faction. Um, is she needed to recruit the water mage? It's incredibly janky, though. They rushed it to get it out on time and didn't really patch it because they ran out of money. Got you. Okay. The Vellum Citadel was an archive and library of massive scale. Its inhabitants were known as the School of Ink and Quill, a circle of mages that, centuries ago, carved out their own mountainous refuge on lands unsettled by the other major realms. Legend said that the Citadel housed a treasure trove of arcane knowledge. The overlord spies infiltrated the school and confirmed as much. The time was right to send a detachment to the Great Library Fortress and force the scholars to yield to Kairos. All right, two options here, chain of command. A detachment of Kairos' army marched on the Valum Citadel, expecting an orderly surrender. As they neared the main gates, a blast of arcane energy struck the commanders dead. Suddenly, the highest ranking officer alive, Kairos' forces looked to you for the next steps. The call weighed on your mind, as it had an immediate influence on soldier losses. Eh, he doesn't care about people though. Ooh, siren! Archon of Song used their power to enthrall enemy mages who crept beyond the citadel walls. After Kairos' forces rounded up the arcane practitioners, the disfavored began executing the new captives before they could share dangerous knowledge, a crime under Kairos' law with the Scarlet Chorus. You punished the disfavored for executing mages bound to the Scarlet Chorus, ordering that several disfavored soldiers be given to the Archon of Song as her personal bodyguards. <laughs> you might kill off someone that in a later mission would totally help you. Ooh, or let someone go that ends up completely screwing you over. Oh, really? There are a bunch of endings based on your choices. Oh, that's awesome. She's needed to get into a secret faction. Oh, interesting. No, you should get Eb no matter what. Oh, okay, that nice. What's going on, Max? How are you, man? Frosty! What's up, dude? I bought Alpha Protocol when it was a new release. I could not get through the hacking tutorial and rage uninstalled. <laughs> All right, that settles it. I'm going to definitely have to try it now. We'll see if I can get through the tutorial. First game that really displayed that level of attention that I played. The Spy Vibe was also really unique. That what, That's what interests me because I don't... 
I'm trying to remember if I've played a spy game that was done really well. Like I've played games that had a spy mission. Um, like there was a, a Mass Effect 3 mission where you had to infiltrate this party with this thief and steal a particular object. Like that kind of stuff, I felt like it was done really well. But And, and there's the Deus Ex games that kind of, it's spy, but it doesn't quite feel jink complete James Bond, right? Um, so I don't know if I've played a game that's like based around you being a spy that I felt like was really, really awesome. Cause I didn't have a console when I was a kid. So I didn't get to play like N64 GoldenEye and all those types of games. Yeah, you force Eve to serve you even if she hates you. Oh really? Oh snap, so I might be able to have Eb on my team? Oh, I might do that. I might do that. Yeah, I'd never slay that queen. Had to get that faction. Which faction is that? You could befriend everyone in Alpha Protocol, even the terrorists, and make enemies out of everyone you encounter, even if your goals align. There are benefits to both. Oh, that's awesome. Sensitive action, lot picking, hacking, minigame, simple and powerful gadgets, abilities, weapon mods. It's all, yeah, okay. You can marry her and become the leader of the Tears and Rebel. The Tears men are like we are saved. No more, uh, no more like under new management. Oh yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that anyway. I don't want anybody to be happy with me. I want everybody to hate me. <laughs> That's good to keep in mind for a good aligned playthrough, though. But no, no, we're not, we're not on that at all. <laughs> Sam, what's going on? Yeah, doing tyranny. Splinter Cell was was very well done in the spy genre, but it wasn't RPG ish. And because of that, I never played it, Johnny. Like, I mostly stick with RPGs, and it felt like a different type of game. And wasn't that kind of like multiplayer? So, yeah, I, I always skip those. The Kasumi Goto mission. Yeah, though, that's like a James Bond type mission that I thought was really, really done well. I spent a lot of time contemplating the RPGs in the gallery, including that they weren't worth it. See, I don't consider Thief to be that. I love the Thief series, but it's not like James Bond, right? He's not talking to anybody. He's just sneaking in, uh, uh, stealing something, and then getting out. You know, whereas I feel like James Bond, he puts on a suit and walks through the front door. You know, and then he's still able to do whatever it is he wants to do. The wisdom of the sages and knowledge of the Vellum Citadel were too important to silence. The disfavored balked at entering the Archon service, but your ruling left them with no recourse. Archon Siren, Siren delighted in having a new toys to play with and promptly enthralled her personal guard. You spotted them in camp days later, following their new mistress with wide-eyed devotion. All right. Uh, let's see. A group of enemy majors surrendered to the disfavor, claiming to be spies loyal to the voice of Naran. No one in the army could verify the claim. The disfavor ready to interrogate the majors, but the Scarlet Corps protested, demanding that the prisoners be given to their custody. They couldn't risk the voices of Naran's secrets falling into the wrong hands. That's a that's an option. Or, ooh, nope. The Archon of Song incited Scarlet Corps recruits to fight their leaders. Bosses were killed and supplanted left and right. The disfavored demanded an end to the practice for the good of the conquest. No, 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 no. Joker loves this. You ruled that each Archon had the right to govern their armies according to their nature. The right of command bred chaos, but it also ensured that the strongest rise to lead. <laughs> Your keen understanding of their ways pleased and surprised the Scarlet Corps detachment, who thanked you for the ruling. The following evening, two gang bosses were murdered in their pallets and replaced by stronger variants, who fought hard to defend their status. Though the camp grew quieter over time, the chorus fought with twice the ferocity under new leadership. Fantastic. Lori, what's going on? Ah, Tyranny, such a fun game. I had a lot of fun when I played through it. Absolutely. Playing where at the right is find an interesting potential fee for you. If you play in Oria, they have a racial trait, Mama's Avert. It's a feat that they re that requires another feat to access. Uh, it gives an Oriad 15 feet of tremor uh, at all times. Yep, yep, yep. Oriad actually has a lot of cool uh, knickknacks to it. I definitely want to do an Oriad build at some point. Later ones have multiplayer. Oh, okay. Hitman. Hitman was definitely a game that gave you that spy feel. I used to love the Hitman games. Finding out the coolest way to eliminate somebody and walk out nobody the wiser, I love that. I kind of dislike some of the later Hitmans where it seemed like they went away from that and created more situations where 
you almost you almost had to enter into violence like it became too layered i'm like no give me a set piece mission where it's a hundred percent possible for me to walk in merc somebody without anybody being the wiser and walk straight out point blank period like that was such a feeling of man i really accomplished something when you figured out how to get it just right Especially three has a James Bond feel. Oh, you know what? I did really enjoy three. Three is the one where you were in uh, New Orleans for one of the set missions, right? Fantastic. When everyone, hey, I don't want anyone to be happy. Doesn't seem unlikely for a person like that to become a judge. It's considered they're apparently picked from life sentence criminals. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, Student of Stone. Yeah, I enjoyed it for sure. Skelly, what's up? Yeah, I, I, I think this game is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this playthrough. No one lives forever? Nope, never played that. You decide what kind of spy you will be. James Bond, Jason Bourne, Jack Barr, a mix of all of them. <laughs> I would love to run a tyranny-style tabletop RPG campaign. I'm sure my friends would love to play and orchestrate an actual conquest. Either um, um, my goal is that by sometime in May, we're going to start a uh, another tabletop game on the um, Discord. I'm actually going to put out a poll, if not next week, then week after. I'm going to try to find out how many GMs do we have in the community? And then what games would they be willing to GM? And then we're going to do a poll to find out in the community we have, what games would they actually be interested in playing that someone would be willing to GM? And then from there, we're going to start that up. My, my goal is by May, we're going to get that started and then just have one going every single month because we got a lot of people that love playing tabletop games, but they don't have a way to come together. I don't have... Um, a way to play it either like the group i used to play is kind of defunct now so definitely definitely we're going to get that going disgusted by your appro approbation of the scarlet chorus the disfavored forces withdrew from the field of battle your small detachment now lacked the manpower to take the vellum citadel what tunan sent word that kairos's patience had run thin the overlord would cast an edict to fire on the enemy the parchment arrived in a slender case of engraved iron. Written on it, the words of a spell powerful enough to destroy the Vellum Citadel. You had the choice of when to read the edict. Reading it at sunrise would offer your enemies no warning of the devastation to come. You could also wait until sunset, giving them ample time to flee or make amends. Damn. I have to give the enemy no quarter, so that's what the disfavored wants, but the Scarlet Chorus Claiming they still had spies within the Citadel, the Scarlet Chorus urged you to warn the mages of the Overlord's Edict. Granting their request, you met with the enemy under a blue flag of peace and warned them of their doom, giving the Chorus' the spies and the enemy a chance to run. Hmm, I don't know about that. I don't get it. You can claim the Edict of Fire at the first moments of dawn, drawing the, granting the enemy no warning of the discussion to come. Though the Chorus insisted your actions doomed their spies, the disfavored applauded your decision. Okay. You know what? True chaotic means that your decisions, your decision making cannot be um, uh, predicted, right? You should be able to act in an unpredictable way. I've been absolutely brutal and merciless this entire time. This once, I'm gonna show a little bit of mercy. You confronted the pages with a warning and hope the message was received. The hour before sunset, numerous figures were spotted fleeing the citadel. As the sun dipped under the horizon, you read the words of the edict. The earth shook and red-orange light glowed in the foundation of the sprawling citadel. Bubbling up from under the library, a torrent of lava heaved with explosive force, gushing from windows in between loose bricks, melting winding trenches in the surrounding land. Days later, the flames still raged on, the conflagration continually fed and renewed by the power of the edict. Mm, 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 mm. And there you have it. Um, it was, not, it was very possible to consistently kill themselves, like making a noise behind a guy standing near a ledge and he steps too far back. Ooh, rough. Ooh, you want to play Magic the Gathering? I, I actually love Magic the Gathering as a kid. I've got like two boxes full of Magic the Gathering cards that apparently I had wrapped up. They, they're really in good condition. I keep telling myself that I should find an app to like scan those cards and find out what all of them are worth. I bet you I got some rare ones some, uh, sitting somewhere over there. 
Well, love to GM if you find people would learn French. <laughs> Maybe one day, can't you? <laughs> I love to watch Tabletop on this channel. Yep, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll work towards that, Black Fist. I'll try to get it to that point at some, some level. There's Rebel Path to the Anarchist Path. This game is so many things based on your choices. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do it. It's been a long time. Oath Breakers and Fate Brian is the way you're looked at faction or, or quest. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I think everybody's going to hate me. I don't usually play the queen faction as a good faction. I just want to be king. Ah, I belong just as much as the other faction. Oh, that's a uh, that's a good call out. Learning French makes your cooking 23% better and you have 442% more likely to go on strike. <laughs> Read the idiot on the core spies. We could have a little friendly fire as a tree. <laughs> and one's chance to catch up on this team life insanely weak uh, uh, year. Yep, that's part of the reason I'm playing Tyranny right now. Man, the guy was so f uh, fun when I was young. I just pick a deck theme and go. I do have a soft spot for five color decks, though. Nice. Yeah, I'd be 100% down for uh, Magic the Gathering. You know what? That's the thought. And if we did Magic the Gathering, you wouldn't even have to GM, right? It's just got rules. I would have to go back through the rules to figure it out. I didn't even think about that, uh, Boss Page, but that's a great, great call out. I wonder how that works, though, trying to play Magic the Gathering um online against other people we'll have to look at that the armies of kairos left the devastation of the vellum citadel in silence from that day forward the tears came to know the once noble citadel as the burning library this was an undisputed loss of resources knowledge culture and life but a message had been sent the overlord will not tolerate defiance you didn't have long to rest before Tunin called you into service once more you were one of the last to depart from the mountains. As you journeyed off, you spotted a few campfires in the mountains. They were mere specks dwarfed by the inferno, the last gas of survivors, or perhaps looters from Kairos' armies, bored and daring enough to pick through the ashes. And that's it. That's it. So if you decide, you know, and I don't like the way I went through those choices, I'd like to start it over, you could do that or you just move forward. You have reached the end of Kairos' conquest. Do you want to continue or erase your progress to start over? We're going to deal with our decisions. Continue. Even though the Queen's um, faction does sound pretty cool. The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. Absolutely, Sloan. Yeah, anybody watching right now who hasn't joined the Discord yet, I highly recommend you do so. We, we, there's definitely a lot of plans for what we're going to do for, with it over the year. Blue, Black, and MTG myself. Okay. We'll be between Monster to Reek, Master, News Generation, Urban Shadows, Absurdia. Yep. Yep, we're going to need to uh, spin up another Urban Shadows game for sure. Green color, other than green, black. Lots of MTG games on Steam, but tread carefully. You could easily get carried away. <laughs> Honor roll mostly, and there's many formats. 2v2, 3v1, free-for-alls. Huh! You so much bo boosting reputation in any direction from all of it. Yep. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. Really? In the Valley of Vendrian's Well... Those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Stupidity. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. To what end? With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance but months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. 
sent across the mountains to Vendrian's well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. Yep, full tyranny playthrough, Alex. What a game. What's going on, Shakes? Fate Minor Joker, I presume. We've been expecting you. Um, just got home from work, and the first thing I want to do is play League of Legends. <laughs> the illness. <laughs> Don't say that in front of Boss Page. It'll. <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> drive up a wall. Oh, I see. You already responded and break that addiction. <laughs> Orchid, what's going on? Uh, I might circle back to DD2. Um, we'll see. But you know, it's not the type of game that I usually play. So I enjoyed it for what it is, but it's not something I had really planned to stick with. Like how puzzled you sound when you said <laughs> it wasn't extinct. <laughs> ah, we did all that? <laughs> Few CRPGs I haven't played. Heard good things. Yep, yep. I, I'm really a big fan of this game. Love Tyranny, by the way. Really fun and open. Yep, awesome, awesome. Yep, take care, Queen. Have a good one. You could delay the idiot by four year if you wait around. Really? All right. This is one weakness of the game. Unlike uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, I think the majority of the characters are not voice acted. But you know how I do. Uh, I'll be voice acting myself, so we'll get through it. Um, a couple of cool things about this. You can always tell who a character is uh, allied with. They'll have the little symbol right here, so you can see that it's this favorite. And you can see whether I have favor or wrath with that particular group. Right now, they have no wrath towards me. But once I meet with the leader, I'm sure he's going to bring up all the terrible things I did during the conquest section and let me know how pissed he is. If this is your first visit to the world of tyranny, watch for those, these windows to help you become familiar with the game. You can disable tutorial messages at any time the game's options window we're going to keep it up because i don't remember how to play this game kairos the overlord be praised when i heard the avalanche i feared the valley was sealed with you on the other side the disfavored warrior claps her gauntlet to our breastplate the traditional salute of her legion conversations involve you another character and sometimes additional parties like bystanders or companions who may interject the choices you make change how the story develops and will build a reputation for your character over time. People in the world will learn of your reputations, good and bad, and respond accordingly. Your character's attributes, skills, history, and gender, as well as decisions you made in the conquest, may all open up options for you in dialogue. These options are not necessarily superior to the other responses, but give you a wider variety of choices to select from. The manner in which someone responds to your choices depends on their individual personality and attitude. Each character who speaks to you will display a banner beneath their portrait. These banners indicate which faction the character is allied with. The tooltip on these banners will provide details about how that faction feels about you. You will often see the names of important characters and locations displayed in a gold text color. The tooltips on these glossary entries provide you with important information about the world. Cool. I was hoping Tunin would send the Queen Slayer, if only see the look on the Oathbreaker's faces when they see you in the flesh again. During your service, uh, both sides widely assessed the situation and ordered me to intervene, in which case I massacred the Queen. Um, it's true, PTSD activated. <laughs> Man, I spent $2,500 in four years on a free game. Wow, they got you good. Man, oh man. Um, Lore, can you hear that hum in the air? That glow around the rocks? Man, the avalanche is Kairos' magic. The Overlord has sealed the valley. Your senses are more than mine, good fate binder. I do not pretend to know much about such things, but if that was Kairos' magic, and you are here on important business, well, you don't have to be the Archon of Secrets to guess that you're here to proclaim an edict. What does Kairos have in store for the enemy? Ten years of festering plague? An edict of twisted bones? I come bearing an edict of Kairos. Our soldiers will complete their task or die. <laughs> The edict is leveled against us. Her eyes widen with fear. Her posture slackens. 
but the scarlet chorus prevents us from taking action. Why would the overlord punish both of She clears her throat with a sigh. Forgive me, it is not my place to question. We should have conquered the enemy within weeks of arriving in the valley. The delay reflects poorly on all of us. Subterfuge. Your first instinct is to blame the Scarlet Corps. Hmm. No wonder Kairos resorts to an edict to enforce order. Yes, well, her eyes shift to the side. There has indeed been little goodwill between our armies, and you are right. When we act as we do, what choice do we give the Overlord? She takes a deep breath, nodding as she exhales. And you are right. I should not cast blame so freely, especially not when talking to a servant of justice. My apologies. Well, you've traveled a long way. I won't keep you further. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you at... Her voice falls silent, her attention snapping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? More runners. Third th time this week, the Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from outside the valley. She points over to the collapsed path by which you arrived. But they're a bit too late for that now. Come, let's show these Oathbreakers a good fight. Ooh, okay. This is like uh, real time with pause, I believe. Oh, I've got heart shot. Got to throw a single target attack that inherits elements of the attacker's fighting style. Oh, it's one uh, meter range, so I'm gonna let that go. Then we've also got hobble, and what's this? Some healing potions? Some healing potions. So I guess we'll go with you. For the queen! Ooh. Tyranny uses, uh, did way worse with Gakkas. What's Gakkas? Oh, what I did with WoW. Uninstall and blocked itself from reinstalling it. <laughs> Live services are cities like that. I agree. Don't worry, day at a time. What a workout used to drain me all the time. Tyranny uses a pausable real-time combat system. Because you will often manage more than one character at a time, it's a good idea to pause the game, issue orders, and resume real time to see the orders play out. The options menu also contains many choices for automatic pausing when certain conditions are met. Press spacebar to pause and unpause the game. Your character can always perform basic attacks using their equipped weapon or their fist if unarmed. Characters also have special abilities and spells they can use in combat. When a character is selected, their ability bar displays their hotkey abilities. As new abilities and spells are gained, they are automatically added to the ability bar. All your character's abilities and spells can be accessed by selecting the category icon at the bottom of the selected frame. Abilities are grouped into talent, spells, combo abilities, artifact abilities, reputation abilities, and stances. Category icons for weapon sets and quick items follow. Interesting. To use an ability, left click on the ability icon and press the hotkey corresponding to its location on the ability bar. Your cursor will indicate, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you are not about. If your cursor has a pair of feet on the corner, you'll need to move closer, yep. Yeah. For abilities that target party members, you can click on the party fortress to target the ability on that party member. Okay, but it says I don't have a party member, so I guess she doesn't count as one. Okay? All five characters, all characters in the game, friend or foe, have five primary defenses against attacks. Parry, dodge, endurance, will, and magic. These defenses are based on the character's attributes, equipped items, and other effects. The character's accuracy is based on their skill with the type of weapon they are wielding. Accuracy is compared to the appropriate defenses when an attack is made to determine how likely it is the attack will hit. There are four possible results from any attack. Hit, critical hit, graze, and miss. A critical hit increases your damage, while a graze reduces it. With each attack, you gain experience in the weapon skills used to make the attack. Even a miss will grant some experience. Ooh, that's good to keep in mind. So this gives me plus 100% graze deflection. Oh, oh, it reduces my accuracy by 100, which I've got to assume is probably a pretty big deal. Now that, now that I've hit you up for a bunch of damage, let's also hobble you to make sure that you don't end up coming towards me. Ooh, that was, that was a long way Will before do. I was able to uh, attack again. I really need to uh, decrease my cooldown. And my skill just increased. Interesting. Uh, there are six categories of talents available to your character. Leadership, defense, power, agility, ranged, and magic. Which each level, you gain one point to purchase a talent from any of these categories. Within a talent tree, each tier of talents unlocks based on how many talent points have been spent within that tree. To learn a talent, select its icon and then the save button to confirm your choice. Each companion has their own talent trees with unique abilities. Oh, okay. These abilities unlock in the same manner as your character's talents. As you spend points within a companion talent tree, further tiers of talents become available. 
One of your skills has gone up a rank. As you use your skills in the game, they accumulate experience. When they gain enough experience, they will increase their skill rank. As skill ranks increase, your characters will gain experience towards their next level. Press C to open the character sheet and view your current experience. Move your character, click anywhere. If you see a red skulker, you cannot walk. As you add companions, all will move corresponding to the formation. Oh, you can set formations in this game. That's good to know. Snake, what's going on, man? How are you? Wonder why Tyranny has been released on consoles. Abandonment. Tyranny did not do well at all commercially, so I doubt they put any additional effort into it. Gakas are a gambling game usually with a free model and a paid model simultaneously. Some have no free model and random gambling to what you get is usually involved. Oh, okay. Um, that's not true, Gifu. Uh, it's even worse if you're someone good at the game so you feel like it's worth it when nobody cares what rank you are in real life. <laughs> Some people do care, Gifu. Some people care. Yes, yeah, a style of game where pretty much every reward is a loot box and you're incentivized to spend all your time to grind them and pay for it. Yep, that's why I avoid them. I was telling the channel before, like, I stopped playing MMOs a couple of years, I think, before I started my channel. And I've been avoiding them like to play. They brought up MMOs for me to play multiple times and I've been like, nah, I don't want to get dragged into it. Although, I just saw a trailer for a new Marvel live service game that basically looks like Overwatch with a new coat of paint. But I don't care because you can play as Black Panther and Punisher. We might have to do that on the channel, y'all. We might have to do that on the channel. You can pause the game at any time. Click in time of day icon, press space bar, click the icon and pause again. You can view and manage your character's inventory attributes and talents using buttons on the navigation bar at the top of the screen or pressing the hotkeys uh, connected with it. Okay. Press escape at any time to save the game. Load a save game or exit tyranny. You can use F6 to create a quick save and F8 to load your last uh, quick save. No problem. Most people you count in the world are neutral friendly. You can act, interact with them, many care, but others will have large conversations. The soldier Aurora, yeah, I already talked with her. And then what's this? In many conversations, you will see words or phrases displayed in a green text color. These provide more information about the character. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now C. Um, oh, and so I'm increasing in all these. Doesn't look like I can level up at all yet, which makes sense. The Conqueror's Will, Weapon to Ruin. The Conqueror's Will, Hide, Complete, Complete Quest. And what is this? Um, oh, I got a, um... I got a sigil of focus, but I have no cores, so it doesn't matter. So we'll deal with this in a, in a bit. And let's save. Cannot save while I'm in combat. Supposedly I'm in combat. I don't see how I'm in. Oh, wait. She wants to just move forward immediately. Why are you moving forward immediately? Oh, no. That shouldn't be happening. Um, Whetstone. Two armor penetrated by attacks for 300 seconds. And posted on protection if you want plus two armor. I got okay, it. I have to keep that in mind. Oh, okay. Cool. It has this stuff. Desiccated corpses line the road of victory to Vendrin's well, an example of the fate that awaits those who resist Kairos's will. The path behind you is now blocked. Kairos's magic has sealed the valley. Let's make sure. Oh, we could come down here. What's this about? Oh, wait, it said F6 to quick save. There we go, quick save to clean. The ancient weeping mother statue pays homage to the queen like Carius, first of her name. I hate the way it doesn't stay up long enough for me to read it. What is that about? Hold on. Is it listed here? Uh, fresh water once flowed from the statue, but when Kairos' forces attacked Vendrian's well in 429, the statue began weeping blood and has done so ever since. Um... Let's see. Climb down with athletics. Can I do that without breaking my neck? Seems so. And yeah, there's stuff to do here. What's this? Water. This looks like the same water image that's used in uh, Deadfire. <laughs> and I'm un able to unlock things, so I got an agate. And what's this? Abandoned memorial. The memorial has been. Take a better look at the tour. Bronze torque, 35 lore. The corroded bronze torque sits atop the shrine. Examine tour. Wait, the memorial has been left to weather the elements for many months. It's fallen to disrepair. Resident at the top of the memorial, a small weather beaten enclosure with a rusted torque inside. Take a better look at the torque. The torque possesses a number of small grooves. It otherwise appears fairly ordinary. Uh, the requirement is not yet to uh, bronze it. 
Yeah, I can't do that. All right, fine. The once pure water of Queen Lacaria's tears has run wet with blood since Kairos' forces invaded. Cray Cray! Fury, what's going on, man? How are you? Lucas, what's up? I gotta play Charity. I love Pillars of Water too. Yeah, Charity's fantastic. How's your Easter? Uh, I didn't have any Easter dinner, but my Easter overall was good. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. I would like to see a CRPG that uses real time with pause that has more animations during combat. Mmm. It feels strange when your characters kind of just stand in, in front of each other waiting. Um, if I remember correctly, Expeditions Rome had, um, you know what, no, Expeditions Rome was turn based. It was not real time with, pause, with combat. Uh, Pillars of Eternity, it has some, it has animations. Pillars of Eternity, especially the second one, Deadfire. It has it's real time with pause and it has animations Sorry, when you do things. Both when you do things in melee and when you do things as far as mage. Yeah, ball space is good people. Some uh, foot movements and feints would be nice. Mm. Being able to rotate the camera fully is something I really value. Not being able to do it is a huge hit for me. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, adjusting to it right now in tyranny. <laughs> We should be vigilant and deal with the remaining oak breakers in the past. I've been traveling for days. How much longer until I reach the Archons? You're almost to your destination. Once we clear the pass of the enemy, just head south down the foothills. From there should just be a matter of hours in the encampments. This seems like a suicide mission. What did the Vendrian Guard hope to accomplish? From what we've learned from the other prisoners, the runners are instructed to escape the valley and drum up support for the Oathbreaker's calls elsewhere in the tears. Aurora shrugs. I don't know who they think will listen to their pleas. We've smashed every army, fortress, and self-proclaimed ruler these low-born tearsmen have to offer. Perhaps they think the wild beasts will rally to their side? Perhaps if you had thrown... Perhaps if you had more thoroughly destroyed these tears, men, we wouldn't be having this current problem. Aurora stares at you with narrowed eyes. We had a lot of ground to cover, and it made sense to accept the surrender and push deeper into the tears. She shakes her head. No use arguing strategies of yesterday. Carry on. All right, what's the deal? Avalanche is blocked. You uh, think you could fit through the rubble? Squeeze through the gap or move bolt. Press your weight against the boulder directly in your path until it starts to move. Boom! Boot strength also works. Uh, lady, you're not coming with us? Alright, well, I don't see a need to get closer. 84%. You got. Can I see how much health you got? I don't think any of those are health. Uh, Honor Guard. Sun Soldier. We're gonna go with the guy who doesn't have a shield. The battle. Oh, she's heading back. Oh, isn't isn't that just wonderful? Let's hobby you to make sure you don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. And we'll just continue attacking. I got it. Good lord, he, it takes him. Quite a right. while to get ready for another attack. We are definitely going to have to increase your uh, your uh, cooldown. <laughs> it's not going to work. There we go. That's one. All right, now I'm definitely going to want to hobble you. Yep, let's hobble you. Make sure you can't go nowhere. Stay over right. whoever it is right up front there. And bam. <laughs> Ooh, you're about to go down anyway. Lovely. Who are you? Oh, you are in bad shape. That's what you are. And you, Sun Soldiers Javelin. I will sell that. Thank you so much. We have six for a quick save. Don't bother with me. Go down to the pass. Drastus. The soldier clutches his gut and winces. You can see a hint of entrails between his fingers. Yeah, you're wounded, and it's not trivial. He laughs through clenched tweet. This but a scratch. I've seen twice as worse than ten times over. He doubles over in pain, gagging and shivering. Oh, if you'll let me help. I said I'm fine. The soldier moans and shakes his head. 
Graven as protects. You go on and help the others. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I was going to do you a solid. Um, you should absolutely try Wasteland 3, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wasteland 3 is definitely going to be streamed on this channel. One thing is also about this game is your character's diary and the journals tab. It gives your character some memoirs of their background and conquest choices. Really? Oh, I have to definitely try that. Have you played the Wasteland games? I've played three, but I haven't played two. I heard one is skippable, but two was really, really cool. So I might uh, try to play two as well. Oh, the claims another. <laughs> the Deluge of Blood. Absolutely. On Path of the Damn Difficulty, it's easy to lose here. And it's just a tutorial. Really? What? That, that, I, I, that's my clue that I need to turn down the difficulty. When I can't get past the tutorial, I'm like, all right, this is just not going to be fun. Several skulls bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds are spiked on rough-hewn posts. It is the only heraldry the Scarlet Chorus needs. <laughs> nice. Do this, do this, do Verse. What up, verse? Uh, ooh. Try and catch me, worm. A young Scarlet Fury weaves around the Vendrian guard attackers, avoiding their weapons with fluid grace. She nods to acknowledge you. A breathless enemy soldier passes a glance to her countrymen. This one's crazy. Too much lead in our water. We should cut our losses and turn back. Harbinger, still standing after three years of war. Come join me in battle once again. We'll show these children how it's done. Hmm. Join the battle. <laughs> Say something for me, Harley. For the realm of Apex, charge! The Vendrian guard level their weapons and advance. <laughs> All right. Do -do 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 -do. Ooh, she's a real party member. Now, let's see. Uh, once again, we'll uh, focus on the one who doesn't have a shield. And, yep, you're good. Oh. Blood soaked stone. Coordinate with Versa and knock your target prone, then follow up with a strong bleeding attack. Alright, well, we'll do that. Oh snap, that puts me in melee range. I didn't want to do that. Oh, or maybe I did. I'll take it. I will take it. Alright, what's this? Launch a burning arrow that sets foes on fire. That's possible. Burst thrust both of our weapons into the target. Penetrating armor. I like skewer. Let's do that. And you back up. Back up. Back up. There we go. Alright. Now, you. Let's make sure you don't try to run anyway. Anywhere. Take take everything she gives you. Okay, yep. And then we're just gonna attack you again. And is she automatically attacking? You know what? I think that might be some AI I that I need to do. Yep. Uh, I need to set up party AI. Okay, cool. Um, launch a burning arrow that sets foes on fire. I wonder if there's an issue with using ranged attacks while in melee range. Probably is. Count so on we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. All right. There we go. He's got that. And yeah, so we'll just do regular attack on you. And do another regular attack. And yep, you regular attack again. And you're done. Whew. I can tell you didn't spend the conquest in a diplomat's tent. The fighter surveys the fresh corpses and nods with satisfaction. I'm verse, by the way. But there are more important things to take care of than introductions. Those Vendrian guard we killed didn't come alone. She gestures to the skirmish unfolding in the past below, shaking her head. It's interesting that they already have her as one of my people. I technically haven't recruited her yet, but I guess she never leaves. The, I think she never leaves the party. So, all right. Um, not so fast. First, explain what you're doing here. The voices of Narat told me to intercept you at Edgering Ruins before you busied yourself solving all of the camp's problems. <sighs> guess I was too late. She smirks. You're due for a meeting with the Archons, but we should handle the small matter of this ambush first. Why are the Vendrian Guard attacking now? <sighs> My guess. The Vendrian Guard are testing our strength in battle, learning how we perform before they organize a real offensive. That or they're really, really desperate to get beyond the mountains and couldn't wait until nightfall. Mmm, you fight like a storm. <laughs> What's your rolling army? A Scarlet Fury, one of the elite killers of our ignoble gang. 
You'll see more than a few of us around camp, but don't let that fool you. We're a rare breed. Most of the soldiers in the Scarlet Chorus are little more than farmers and children armed with rusted forks. Makes them easier to control. The voices of Narat called his best fighters to this siege. There must be something important about Vendrian's well, though don't ask me what. The Archon isn't in the habit of spilling secrets. Join the battle. I'm ready if you are. Eager. <laughs> I like that. Before we go, you might search among the remains of our fallen comrades. Wherever they're bound, I doubt they'll miss their boots, much less any rings or any useful iron they might be clutching. <laughs> I see your point. Nice and practical. No reason to pity the fallen. Before long, we might wish we'd joined them here. But at least we'll enjoy heavy pockets and warm toes. Ooh, we gained, uh, loyalty. For the voices of Narat! Verse Burles O'Brown focuses down on the battle to come. All right. I beat two and three. Two was pretty good. It's pretty buggy and has some glaring issues. Three was pretty polished in my experience with some issues. Okay. Okay, first of all, man. Remember how my playthrough is such a badass. Yep, she's going to be a permanent staple in our party for sure. Currently, Billy Shot that has all the outfits a uh, grenade player could want. I put a tuxedo cat in the office there named Toast. <laughs> Kind of a baddie though. Yeah, I agree, a baddie. That is one thing this game is uh, missing. No, um, um, uh, no romances. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good romance. An empty spike stands waiting to claim its victim. All right. So how's this work? Um, we is verse definitely sounds like Mitsuru in Persona 3. I can't wait. Uh, Y'all keep mentioning Persona 3. I'm looking forward to uh, finally playing that. What's going on, Erica? How are you? Yay, forks. <laughs> All right. Um, we just picked up a bunch of things. Ooh, what's this? Tenacity. Oh, so it provides me with plus two resolve. I think that makes more sense for you. Because resolve, wait, if I if I remember correctly, resolve is about tankiness, right? Right click for details. Why isn't it letting me right click for details? I want the details. Why isn't it letting me right click for details? What am I going to put it? Does it have to be here for that? Um, still not. Actually, it's still not letting me do it. That's weird. Oh, here we go. Now it's finally letting me do it. Plus two. Oh, but, but it's not telling me what resolve does. Um, where would I see resolve? Where would I see? Hold on. My uh, resolves this last one, right? Reduces affliction duration, um, uh, affliction duration, dur endurance, will, and magic defense. Okay, so yeah. Uh, long term, burst is going to be my main tank. So it's very, very important to me that she gets her stuff taken care of. All right. Only Joker can equip this, whatever it is. What is this again? Oh, these are actual boots? Oh, okay, cool. Um, Cleansing victory. Oh, oh, so that's just the mark letting you know only he can uh, do it. Ceremonial fate binder or ton in armor plus two armor, reflection, yada yada. Seems like that's better than what I have right now. Oh, wait a minute. Is this row? Oh, 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 this is what's better. My bad. My bad. So then let me look at this real quick just to be sure. Um. Reflection 5%. Uh, yeah, and this reduces a bunch of things. So, yeah, no, I'm good. And then we have the phalanx. I don't need that. And wait a minute. Scarlet Fury Helm. This seems like something you should have, little lady. Here you go. And But let's hide the helmet. It's crazy that a game as old as Tyranny has hide helmet option. But uh, <laughs> Drag's Dogma does it. Joker does not have enough lore. Damn, I feel like I kind of screwed myself up when it comes to the lore. feel like I, I probably should have put in a little bit more, but it's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Persona is super good, but it's a slow burn. Yeah, we're definitely going to play it. Allegra Clark is the name of the voice actress. She also has a voice option for the player character in the game as well. Hmm. So while you're playing Tyranny, it's up on my playlist of games. I should play as soon as. Yeah, I definitely recommend uh, checking this out. There we go. That's where I know I'm from. Josephine and Dragon Age Inquisition. Interesting. I want romance in the games that don't have it, but I actively avoid the romance in games that include it. Really? I think I'm just doomed to always want what I don't have. <laughs> so you didn't play romances in BG3? 
where I string along the emphasis as long as I possibly could and they would do the BG3 bow with a bay. Well, that was nice. Back to work. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. Persona is good. It depends if you'd like to comment or not, but the story for three and four and five is insane. Okay. I heard you could just go ahead and start with three. You Can't don't need do to that. play uh, the, the earlier uh, Persona one and two. Would you agree with that? Ooh. That, that seems like a lot of people. Is it really five? Eyes forward, no looking back. The Vendrian Guard warrior roars his foul fox held high, his words largely lost over the din of combat. Oh, Wrath, Queen Slayer! The warrior rears back his swinging arm as the invective hisses off his tongue. I have a long dream of laying claim to your skull. So nice of you to present yourself. You just arrived at camp and they already gave you a title? Impressive. As he signals his men to charge, the sound of chanting rises from the south, draws his attention. Scarlet Court's reinforcements, hurry! Oh, there we go, split up a little bit. Mocking Blaze, run down the oath breakers, let none escape! From the red mob of reinforcements from the south, a blood chanter emerges at the head of the rabble, the ornamental crest of her staff pulsing with crimson tones. Signing sigils of magic and wordlessly moving her mouth, the blood chant describes a series of spells into the air. A red glow surrounds the Vendrian Guard warriors as the chanter's magic worms its way into their minds, blinding them with rage. Hold position, all of you, you there, keep to the path. The warrior gestures along the canyon trail, but his soldiers turn their attention to the scarlet cords, roaring challenges. No, don't engage them, we need to run. His orders falling on deaf ears, the warrior reluctantly readies his weapon. Ooh, the companion versus join your party versus capable warrior. Skilled in both melee and ranged combat, as you acquire a companion, you will need to balance their strengths against the strengths of your character to be successful in combat. While it is possible to adventure alone, you will find the game more rewarding with a well-balanced party. There are now two characters in your party, both are selected, and the commands you issue now will affect both party members. To select a single party member, select their, yep, yep, yep. Select multiple, click and hold anywhere on the screen, drag the marquee, yep, yep, yep. You can either control your new companion directly or have, or you can enable their AI. In fact, I need to enable AI and have them attack and use their abilities automatically. Once the AI is enabled, you can always select them and tell them to attack a specific enemy or use an ability and they will follow your orders. If you right click on the AI button, you can see the AI settings for your party members. You can set the auto attack behavior of each character, which determines how they attack enemies. For companions, you can also choose AI packages that determine how they would use their abilities in combat. Versus has several stance abilities that provide her with different benefits in combat. Stances are modal abilities, meaning they can be toggled on and off. Only one stance can be active at a time. When the stance is deactivated, all stance abilities in a cooldown for a short duration. Okay. Um, so, let's see. AI behavior enabled. Aggressive. The character will actively seek out targets even if death is close, for sure. Defend party. The character will attack anyone who attacks a member of their party, but will not seek out targets unless provoked. No, no, no. Seek it out. Uh, default. Blade Dancer. Burst will fight aggressively in melee, targeting enemies with low health and low defenses. She will attempt to remain mobile in the battlefield and alternate between red geyser and seeking sh uh, sheath stances at high health and three whispers at low health levels. When in danger, Burst will attempt to use her unbound ability to trick the enemy and attack vulnerable enemy targets. Interesting. Or default. This behavior will use the widest array of spells and abilities, so long as the character knows them. I like Blade Dancer for now. And save. Okay. Uh, oh, that's right. You can't move this around. He's got a shield. He's got a shield. So I guess I'll just go with him then. Um, you. Oh, that's right. I could do. We could do this once per encounter, right? Okay, fine. That's what I want to do to you, and then, you know what, she'll do this to you, and then, we'll do that. Ayo, what's going on? Persona 1 and 2 are basically an entirely different series in how they play and what they're getting at. Oh, okay, so yeah, you could definitely skip them. Nice. Um, please, that Dragon's Dama having quality of life features? Preposterous. Ha 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 ha! Nice. 
I did end up seeing the Romans future playthrough, sure, but my favorite was the Avenger of the Mighty Spear, the Ocot Blade. Gotcha, okay. Um. Um, you know what? Here, maybe we do. There we go. Now you focus on that one. You go back. There we go. And gotta be close to that. Alright, now we'll do that. And you will get a little bit of this if we They are getting obliterated over here. It is not going well at all for them. Damn. Yeah. Oh, and then he just obliterated all of them in one go. Holy, holy smokes. He just, <laughs> he handled business. Damn. Never had a that was kind of wild. Does he have, there we go. Damn. All right, um, Dagon, what's going on, man? How are you? I admit, sir, I'm not sure if one or two are so widely available. Okay, so then three is definitely the one. Rimco, what's going on, dude? This is a great game. Not many try this genre where evil is one and you just make your way in. It's that new evil world. Hope you like this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a fan. I'm looking forward to this playthrough. Happy tyranny day of disability. <laughs> What's going on, fugitive? These Persona game is a relatively standalone, just share common themes. Oh. Okay, so yeah, definitely. Uh, fugitive, they're talking about Persona. One, two, two, three to five seem to be in the same universe. Yeah. My cat dogs to the face. Persona's kind of all or nothing. You either love them or not a fan. Okay, we'll see. Come quick. We have a situation on the cliff side. They have the commander. All right. Whoa. All of our health came back. Or a lot of it. I wonder how that works. All right. We'll take, ooh, that looks like some stuff she might actually want to equip. Several skulls bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds are spiked on the roughly hewn post. It is the only herald, oh yeah. You Can't do that. Before. Weapons and armor are strewn haphazardly around the cart. Every blade shows sign of rust, and every piece of armor is in need of repair. Okay, looks like cheese and a little bit of a... Sorry, can't. Um, is that the same? Weapons and armor are stacked with neat precision on this transport cart. Every spear is honed and oiled, ready for battle. Let me click on it. Oh, I'm in pause. That's why. Kairos ordered the original icon of the disfavored erased from memory. For over a hundred years, the disfavored have kept the scratched out iconography, wearing it with pride. Admiring the disfavored sigil? I know a thing or two about that. This torn banner reflects, bears the scratched out icon of this favor. The army's original symbol has been lost to history, and Graven Ash has never ordered a replacement, preferring the blasted icon over all others. Looks like some boots and a gym. The symbol of the scar, of course, is smeared in blood on the tattered cloth tent. No effort has been made to repair the gaping tears. Cosma, what are you doing? You'll draw attention to me. Oh, he's a Scarlet Chorus. Why aren't you? Please attend to the battle at hand. Okay. The torn banner bears a scratched out icon that disfavored. The army's original symbol uh, has been lost to history. All right. Sorry, yeah, can't. Read that. Oh, oh, there's a little thing there. Hmm. Interesting. Remember this one. Never could quite finish. I remember magic being hilariously unbalanced. Yeah, magic is awesome in this game. 
technique did it made Eddie so traditional. I'm researching corporea instruments. <laughs> they didn't they just uh 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 yeah I just saw the trailer for Eddie Gordo. Isn't that the first time he's been back in Tekken since the first game he was released? I remember him being like crazy overpowered. I remember every time I was in the arcade, uh people everybody wanted to pick him. And I soloed everyone with area of effect spells. Hmm, I hope uh, it's that easy for me. Depends if you burn that damn library. I did burn the library. What, do you get more spells if you uh, if I had left the library untouched? Yeah, tyranny, from what I understand, was more of an experiment in theme and story, so combat wasn't a main focus. Mm -hmm. Theme was spot on for a starter. Yeah, I, um, um, I don't remember whether or not this is about this. It should be interesting to find out. Stole your weapon, so we find out how long a man screams before hitting the ravine down below. Cornered between a precipitous drop and a band of angry soldiers, the Oathbreaker warrior holds a disfavored officer at knife point. Skewer him. Worry not for me. Graven Ash will protect. The disfavored officer winces, blood seeping from the seams of his braces and cuirass. You heard the man. He plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Permission from your pimp? <laughs> this blade, with a jerk of the knife, he slices off a clump of Drast's matted hair. If you're so eager to see your ally dead, just step closer. Ooh, so, since we did the prologue in a certain way, we get certain options. And I am the Queen Slayer, so the people who are part of the Vidrian Guard absolutely cannot stand me or I could do athletics if I wanted to. Lower your weapon then charge forward and rest the knife from him. Uh, but you know what? I just like the idea of my reputation giving me certain options. So we'll go with conquest. Even though you might have noticed when you use skill related um, options, it increases your value in that skill. But that reinforces it even more. I don't care about athletics for my character. Verse is probably the one who's going to specialize in athletics, so yeah, conquest all the way. Come on now, why kill that disfavored? Nobody, when you can take your swing at the Queen Slayer. <laughs> you, the Queen Slayer, pushing Drassus to the side, Felix Terrell bounds forward with murder in his eyes. His glorious charge ends somewhat abruptly as the disfavored soldiers step in weapons out and butcher Terrell. Dazed but alive, Drassus lets out a long sigh and struggles to his feet. <laughs> Kairos be praised. That Oathbreaker fought with the rage of Cairn himself. Drassus slides a trembling hand along the cut on his neck. Thank you, Fatebinder. I thought today was my last. From the look of it, guess they thought it'd be if they sworn the past, maybe one might make it out. We found a few scraps of parchment on the bodies. Drastus holds out a handful of crumbled parchments for your inspection. A student of letters such as yourself should be able to make sense of this. What? All that training and graven ass doesn't teach you to read? The commander stares at you, unamused. <laughs> Examine the parchment. Repeating the same messages in different written scripts, the parchments explain the Vendrian Guard's desire to overthrow Kairos Archons and rout their armies from the tears. The pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to the Younger Realms to gather at Vendrian's well. Recruitment material. Hmm, they were trying to bring more traitors to the fight. Well, from the look of it, we kept them from slipping out of the valley. Whatever they hope to accomplish, I think their plan died here. The Archons are expecting you. When you're ready, leave by the gate to the southeast and follow the trails downslope for a few hours. You'll see the campfires leagues away. Can't miss it. Awesome. Screen by screen. Very quiet. You'll realize evil always tries because good is dumb. <laughs> Long live the patriarchy. Oh, God, no. Eddie was in every Tekken after three when he was introduced. Really? He's a staple? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Uh, let's see. Scroll. Another scroll. Oh, this one, Quick Finger, gives you haste. That's interesting. The once pure... Oh, oh, oh. This is the other side. Okay, cool. 
On it. We'll get to that at some point. Oh, and now we could. Oh, we now we could talk to all those people. Interesting. Uh, can we get up here? We can climb up the rope. Let's do that. <laughs> that ticks. And there's a little something, something we can loot. Uh, this is a potion of invi invisibility. Well, well, well. You can be invisible in this game. Isn't that nice? All right. Oh, uh, does Aurora have anything else to say? Fate Binder. Aurora salutes as you approach. We are honored by your presence. Need something? What's the situation here at Vendrin's Well? The Oathbreakers hold the Citadel at the heart of the valley, the one built around the base of the spire. Aurora points east toward the tower in the distance. The Matani River has been our largest headache since during the siege. It's unsafe for armored troops to ford, save for at key locations, and the enemy knows this as well as we do. I know we'd be a lot farther along if the Scarlet Chorus uses alleged strength and numbers to ford the river themselves and overwhelm the enemy. Aurora looks at Verse with a disapproving air. As it is, we must take the valley slowly and advance to this favorite bulwark, since that's where the real work gets done. Because all it takes is numbers to cross a river under a hail of arrows, if the disfavor were quicker to act, maybe the Vendrian guard wouldn't be so trained up to face us. Lore, if either of you was correct, the campaign would be over and I wouldn't be here. A fair point. The Legion is eager to gain some perspective on our quarrels. Consequently, I retract my previous remark. Really? Because I don't. Next time you say something, try to mean it. <laughs> there goes the badass. How long have you been with the disfavored? Seven years. She pauses to count on her fingers. Two seasons, mayhap a handful of days. I trained in Fort Resolution a bit before the conquest. Compared to the commanders you find around camp or stationed at Ironheart, that makes me one of the young bloods. This has been a long and grueling campaign, but the end is in sight. We'll soon have the Oathbreakers back under control. Then we can rest, retrain, and even cycle out troops so we can see our families again. What can you tell me of the Vendrian Guard? They are the last gas of the younger realms. Among them are warriors that escaped the bastard city siege, a few refugees from other victories, and a bunch of Vendrian locals with delusions of independence. The southern racetrals cannot match our iron, nor the course's members. What on Taratus gave them the nerve to rise up and ask for a second helping of battle is anyone's guess. Seen anything interesting during the war? I once saw a forge-bound artisan set himself on fire, occupational hazard. That was an unpleasant day, the first of many, to be honest. I heard about the edict you could proclaim at the burning library, but thankfully I wasn't there. One fire was enough for me. Carry on. She taps her gauntlet to her breastplate and salute. Have a pleasant siege, fate binder. <laughs> Have a pleasant siege. <laughs> wow. I love the casual. Waterfall of blood. <laughs> yeah, Cosmic, we were talking about uh, how many Tekkens Eddie has been in. I only remember him from Tekken 3, I believe. But apparently he's been in several others as well. I do hate these in-game uh, the in-game portraits. Why? It's one of the most absurdly reactive games I've ever played. I love how it comes right out the gate with so many choices and options, which make your playthrough unique. Yeah, we were just talk seeing the conquest dialogue option. It's insane how much the conquest at the first the, uh, beginning impacts your overall playthrough. Cole, I'm a big fan of this game. Definitely, definitely recommend playing it. Queen, good to see you back. The park is a, a charging port. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Uh, Sorry, wait, can't. Wait, let's see. This required, I think, 35 uh, lore. What is my... Oh, I got 35 lore now. Okay, so we'll go back over can't there. Can't do that. In a bit. How do I get up here? What is going on? Oh, wait. Somehow... I'm supposed can't to do that. It. How do I get over to this side? Oh, wait, maybe, oh, 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 once you're out here, you can come around to the other side. I see now. I see now. Um, so there's these three. You know, here, hold on. First, we'll come, we'll, we'll go back around to the other side first and get that lore thing. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk to these people. Blood for the blood god. <laughs> B3 has been out almost a year and is still top five bestseller on Steam. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Who would have thought Baldur's Gate 3 would be like 
uh, game of the year the way it was. And a few others, but got rotated out for Christy. In between three and seven, a bit of a blur for me. Okay, interesting. No, climb down. I had to see is that the lovely waterfall blood near the plains of despair. <laughs> Indeed. Take the torque. You recognize the corroded bronze torque as a relic of Tears Men folklore. And the party gained a battle worn torque. Okay. All right, Cr Christy Nontero, who is female Eddie. Oh, you know what? I remember seeing trailers for her, and I was like, man, she reminds me of Eddie. Okay, interesting. Love this game a lot. Uh, really quick to uh, play through, too. Yep. What's going on, uh, Babush Babushka? Yep. I'm a, a big fan of this game. Big, big fan. So looking forward to going through it. GLG has this for $12.99. Might give it a try. I can't recommend it highly enough, Cole. Uh, really, really cool stuff. It is a shorter game. Obsidian kind of ran out of money and had to uh, push this out. But it's just well worth experiencing. Well, well worth experiencing. All right. What are you? Fate Binder. What an honor to have one of Tunin's court visit our humble holdfast. Need supplies? Bursting with energy, the merchant slams her palm down on top of the crate. If so, you've come to the right place. So, what'll it be today? She spreads out a welcoming arm over her wares. How's trade? Well, this is a service posting. No profit up here in the past. That's Harchian Bronze's orders. But when we march out of the valley, I'm back on my own schedule. And here's to hoping this year is a good one. The overlord forbids the extortion of the pathways. Good thing, too, because in years past, I'd lose most of my profits to tolls. Couldn't turn a copper if I tried to haul long distance. I trust you've granted proper stewardship of the goods you are peddling? I, uh, well, you see, Fate Binder, the merchant cranes her head to the side, scratching her neck. I think so. I've been handled these bits of scripts. She reaches across a stack of provisions to snatch a scroll case. But I'm not a woman of letters. Numbers are my strength, as you can well imagine. Uh, let me see those. Certainly good fate binder. She hands you the scroll case while wearing a quizzical expression. A cursory read indicates this merchant is granted the unlimited right to trade in a logistical capacity. When not supporting an active battle, she has the right to trade grain, copper, and olives anywhere in the tiers. Where did you get these? The Harchian Bronze acquired these on my behalf, from Archon Tunin's agents, I believe. Her expression shows deep concern. Do you see an issue? Well, looks like we have a slight problem here. A, a problem? But how can that be? I paid a span's profit for the stewardship. What sort of problem is there? Hmm. You had the right to trade as part of active war efforts. Currently, it would seem our armies are unable or unwilling to fight. Uh, see the problem? Oh, I, I see the problem. Her eyes narrow and her hand slides towards the strings of coppers along her waist. Let's skip some steps in this dance, shall we? She holds uh, up a hand with a string of copper rings dangling from her fingers. A donation to the court. Call it a proper fine. Call it tribute to our protection. Just call off your game if you say yes. Keep your coins. Just give me the friend's rate. So be it. A smile creeps across her face. We'll trade as friends, and I'll not warn the other merchants of your flippant justice. Let's see what you have. Joker likes a good deal. Okay. Ooh, I don't remember the, the way this works at all. Oh, so camping supplies. Hmm, 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 hmm. Solid. Thanks. Yep, absolutely. One game's more games like Tyranny, so I thought I'd support the desk. But I just don't think I'd like it. I'm one of those softies who doesn't like being mean to people in RPGs. You don't have to be mean. You can absolutely play as someone who's fighting against tyranny. Didn't have the part to play through the swarm content. <laughs> to live vicariously through me? All good. Using in-game models with those extreme reactions seems very cartoonish to me in class without serious this game. Oh, you're talking about the portraits that like change as you go through? I don't automatically dislike it. But I don't think they have enough of them to really be effective. And I agree, it makes the game a little more, um, uh, I guess cartoony is kind of a good word. It takes away from the seriousness of the game. That's for sure. I definitely, definitely agree with that. All right, short bow. We have a short bow. Yeah, so these are all uh, bottom of the barrel stuff, right? But the, the sigils we do kind of need. Now... Um, is there anything here we can sell? Oh, we can sell this stuff. Yeah, this stuff can be traded. Uh, we don't need this. 
Wait, I don't need that. Um, yeah, Sun Soldier Javelin. We don't need that. Bent Bronze Sword. Um, Soul to Merchant Spare Parts. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, head wrap that might be useful. Ben Brown sword, uh, bronze phallus. Why do you, why does it keep going to uh to the weapons? All right. What um uh, if this is all equipment? Why does it have that other thing here? Oh, this is quest items. That's why this is the edict. Yeah, this isn't something you can sell. Okay. What is this? The bangles. I'm gonna be keeping that. And the rest of this looks like I'm probably gonna be keeping as well. So this oh this actually gives me four. So I could Sigil of Lightning, um, yeah, and then it's a core, yeah, well, let's go ahead and pick that up. I also feel like I should have some camping surprise. What? There we go. Uh, we could probably, we can have three, right? Here, let's get two and see what happens. Okay, a couple of campus supplies because I don't think we have any at this time, right? Yep, no campus supplies. So we'll get that and a couple of campus supplies. That's all the money that we have. Excellent. All right. Go back in here. What is this? Um, learn Sigil of Lightning. You've discovered a new sigil. Magil in the world of tyranny comes from learning how to perfectly scribe sigils and empower them with energy. Open the spell interface by pressing P to learn to create a new spell with the sigil you just learned. Will do soon. Oh, wait a minute. I could sell some of this stuff. Battle worn torque. Uh, right click for details. Uh, plus one vitality. She would probably uh, want that more. Uh, oh, but this gives her plus two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Plus one vitality. There we go. Oh, we can sell the phalanx. We can sell these two things as well. And then uh, you, Lore, uh, Sigil of Distant Impression. That's fine. Sigil of reach, Reaching Grasp. Come on now. And learn. There we go. Uh, quick Finger Bangles. Plus one to quickness. You're definitely taking that. Mm. If you ever do a second playthrough on, on the channel for this game because it is shorter than usual, I'd love to see you play as a very stern and orderly mage or an incredibly kind and generous paladin. If I played it again, I'd do the kind and generous paladin, save the queen, uh, ally with the tears, and fight against tyranny. If they ever uh, announce a tyranny too, I'll definitely play this again. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Can't wait until tomorrow my data kicks back on. <laughs> awesome, Queen. Do you have a favorite CRPG? Um, not not technically, but I actually did. Um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I released on the channel a video ranking the top 50 PC games that I played. The number one CRPG on that list was Wrath of the Righteous. Um, let's see. Commander's Will. This is heavy armor. Neither one of us want to use that. What about this? Uh, this reduces your deflection, but it also reduces your recovery time. So we'll go ahead and take that. <laughs> His beard looks funny hanging out like that. So wait. Yeah, this is just a regular. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm getting that wrong. This is a regular head wrap. This is a ceremonial head wrap. Uh, oh, and it increases, I see, the head wrap I was wearing increases deflection, but it also increases uh, recovery time. Whereas this has 1% uh, deflection and plus 1 accuracy. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to side with the head wrap. And then what's up with the bracers? Plus 3% uh, deflection and plus, let's see, it's got an unarmed attack, 3%. Yeah, this is better. So we're going to go with the horde bracers. Excellent. All right, now let's sell all my stuff. Let's see what you have. You can take this. 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 Um, and is that uh, um, that we do have one guy who wears heavy armor. He might like the other stuff. So that get allows us to take that and take that and trade. And then learn. Oops! God, dog it! I didn't mean to do that with verse. Verse doesn't need the increase in lore. There we go. All right. All right. All right. All right. 
Wasn't there one other Can't thing we couldn't do uh, because we didn't have lore? Or it might have been one of those spells that we learned. Yep, I'm a big fan of Wrath of the Righteous. Ton of Wrath of the Righteous uh, content on the channel, Jeremiah. You got a bazillion videos on it. Help me a ton. Yep, absolutely. Really, really enjoy playing through that game. Okay, Sorry, so that's my map signal. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What am I doing? There's a whole camp of uh, people in the middle here that I didn't talk with. My bad. Pathfinder is so complex in terms of character building. It needs a few days just for theory crafting before you can even start. Yep. <laughs> it is no joke. Um, if you ever played D&D 3.5, Pathfinder was just more icing on that glorious cake. <laughs> Probably watched five hours of slander videos before I got three hours into the game. Helped a ton. That's awesome, Cole. I'm, gl I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Glad uh, you found the videos useful. The prisoner says his name's Tarkus Demos. Drashus lets out a long sigh, tapping his gauntlet finger to his temple. Then I don't think this is a complicated matter. He dies. His family's been a driving force in the Vendrian Guard. Killing him should demoralize whatever's left of the Tarkus clan. But we must offer the enemy redemption. Well, save for their inbred nobles. Just ask the Queen Slayer. The chatter lets out a hearty chuckle, though an incomplete set of teeth. The corpses can't serve the chorus, so while mercy always pains me, it is what the verse voices on the rack commands. We let you take prisoners, but you can't control them. You send these conscripts out on patrol and they never return, defecting all over again. I can't let this nonsense strategy continue. Well, I insist this Oathbreaker be taken to the Voices of Narat, leaving us at an impasse. Fortunately, we have a fate binder here to settle the matter for us. The chance returns to you, an expectant smile creeping across her face. So, what say you? What should become of this prisoner? Conquest. Last I was here, the chorus was more than willing to poison the locals with no offer of redemption. What changed? Yes. Well, the chanter narrows her eyes, scowling as she contemplates her words. We are indeed guilty of being haphazard in when we take pains to conscript and when we focus on getting the job done. But the fact remains, this warrior has use, hopefully as fighting stock, maybe a swine feed. Either way, killing him is the true waste. The chorus should be allowed its chance to recruit new warriors. This is the sort of nonsense that got us into the mess we're in now. If we keep sowing these mongrels mercy, they'll just bite us time and time again. If it will calm your nerves, I assure you, this one won't be put out on the battlefield. The maid snaps her fingers loudly, gesturing for her gang to listen. Make sure the prisoner is taken straight to the voices of Naran. I won't keep you here any longer, Fate Binder. I know you have important business in the valley. Drassa salutes you, his iron gauntlet wrapping against his breastplate. For the glory of Kairos. Excellent. All right. Can I... On it. Nope. No more. Oh, wait. I, maybe I could talk to you? Nope. We sing the anthem of pain. Hmm. Night, Remco. This game was cool. Need to get back and finish it. Yeah, Andrew. It was an absolutely fantastic game. You started the court. You just need to have a couple of necromancers on here. <laughs> Games like this would have been perfect for the dark sun setting, but licensing issues and all. Not sure. Some people are going to touch Wizard of the Coast now. Yeah, it seems like everybody's trying to uh, figure out how to move away from it. Ooh, did we just level up? We might have just leveled up. <laughs> and we got some interesting things. Awesome. Joker should have a Skeletor voice for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Let's see, do you think you would ever give Arcanum a try? 100%, but I don't know if um, Arcanum is a good uh, live streaming game. Once again, you know, there are some games I play because I feel like they're great uh, CRPGs and it'll be awesome to give it a try. But then there are other games that I play that I actually live stream for the channel, right? Like we played Underrail yesterday. I, I can already tell Underrail is a fantastic CRPG. But is this a fantastic CRPG to live stream? Not necessarily the same thing. Your character has earned enough experience to advance a level. With each level, your maximum health increases and your character is fully healed. Ooh, you also increase one attribute of your character and purchase a new talent. Click on the level uh, number of your character's portrait to spend your points or press C. 
Um, cool. What else? Store. Stores allow you to trade and sell your uh, items for copper rings or items in the store inventory. If you sell something, you might be. Uh, if you sell something, you might see it appear in the store's inventory with a much higher cost. They refresh their inventory, so check back to see what's available. Hidden objects. You discovered a hidden object. Enable scouting. Oh, wait. Many areas of Territus have hidden traps or chests. When discovered, these objects will highlight all of, for all of your party to see. Enable scouting mode by pressing L. Uh, left off to make finding these objects easier. Oh, damn. I should have been using that, I guess. Damn. Scouting mode is used both for stealth and finding hidden objects like traps and secret containers. While scouting, your character's selection circles will start to fill with yellow when a hostile character is starting to detect them. Once the circle fills yellow, suspicious, several times will grant your character a bonus to attack you from stealth. When combat starts, Siren begins singing one of her songs. Why are you telling me about Siren's songs? I don't have Siren. Spell scrolls. You discovered a scroll that contains the image for a uh, sigil of magic. Your party has... If a member of your party has a high enough lore skill, you can learn this sigil and use it to craft spells. If you meet the lore requirement for the skull, right-click on it to learn it, which we did, but we haven't gone through magic yet, so we'll have to check it. One of your party members is low on health. You can use health potions to heal your character so they can continue fighting. Use a health potion as an instant action. Benefit apply immediately, even if your character's on recovery. Oh, wow. Afterwards, all consumables are on cooldown for a short duration. That's an interesting system. Okay. One of your party members has been hit with a disengagement attack. A disengagement attack occurs when one character is engaged in another character in combat, and the person they are engaged in tries to move away. Be careful of how your party members move on the battlefield to avoid receiving disengagement attacks. Yes, that is to be avoided. Cole, thanks you so much for the $10 donation, dude. Be well, sir. Thanks for the live. Actually going to play this one shortly. That's awesome. I hope you enjoy it, man. Really hope you enjoy it. Um, there's, uh, you'd have to play Dark Side. Completely agree on Arcanum. Hell no, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> Slandered, what's going on? Uh, uh, Slandered, uh, <laughs> Dad Lord, what's going on, man? How are you? <laughs> Dark Sun, if depression itself were a setting, I I is that so? Landscape Torment is in that same family of games, to be honest. Very significant to the CRPG world and a darling for game writers, but a poor game for viewing experience. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I kind of like how the Underrail uh, stream worked. You know, we did a stream for a few hours. It was really cool for people who are fans of the game. They got to check in, see a little bit of it. People who had never played it got to check it out and get a feel for how it is. And then we move on to something else that's easier to stream, like Tyranny. I think that was really, really cool. So I could see myself doing that, where like I buy Arcanum, do like one or two streams, and then I play the game on my own the rest of the way. As you make your way through the tiers, use the mini map in the lower right corner of your screen to see what parts of the map you've already been to and what's left to explore. Hold down the M key to, to maximize the mini map or press the key to toggle between the mini map and the combat log. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's cool. So you can expand it like that. I didn't realize that. Okay, cool. Minimap displays useful information, position of enemies, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, of course, like any other game. One of your characters has been engaged. When they are engaged, they stop moving. Yep, attack. You will automatically engage enemies. Yep, when the select character is engaged, the curse will change. Yep, gaze was indicated by arrow drawn. Yep. All characters sprint and foe must recover after every action they take in combat. Recovery, yep. If you issue an action to a character and want to cancel, you can press X with that character selected. Cool. Ouch. When a party member is reduced to zero health, they are knocked out. None of my party members were knocked down. Um, a wound reducing the massive health of future combats until they rest or level up. No problem. You scored a crit. A crit is a better result than a hit, and they are more likely to occur when the attack's accuracy is higher than target's damage. Um, that's fantastic. And then finally, hold down the tab key to see things in the environment, which we already picked up. All right. All right. I think we can stop with that. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. What is, so we've got stealth on. Oh, that's alt. Do they have like a, a fast, um, here and they were ran scroll screen. Area loot, difficulty normal, yeah, auto pause, huh, Tides of Numenera is supposedly really good, but from a story standpoint, just like uh, Planscape, yeah, I, I've heard va varying um, opinions on the sequel, like some say it's really, really good, and then others believe like it's completely trash, and doesn't compare to the original.
is espresso depresso. It is so interesting in the setting. We got things about time. I can't wait for Road Trader to get its full DLC stack, so I buy it and go and gobble them all for a week. Yeah, I'll definitely circle back to it once it gets some DLC. I've also got eyes on Black Geyser, which came out last year, I think. Yep, I did a review for Black Geyser on the channel, Erica, and they're supposed to be working on an expansion right now to preview the game in a live environment rather than a curated style of video essay. Yep, there's a much better feel for what the moment-to-moment -moment frustrations of the game are. Exactly. That's why I felt like it worked well. I always play games. All in or skip. <laughs> get the impression that... James, what's going on, man? How are you? I get the impression that Paradox, the publisher, pushed Obsidian to make a tyranny more console-friendly. Even things like being able to just walk up and attack people is gone compared to Pillars of Eternity. Yeah, it kind of does have that uh, feel, doesn't it? Um, all right. Definitely pause if a character dies. That's not good. Enemy spotted. Yeah, let's chill. Uh, hidden object found. Yep, let's do that. Party member finishes ability. No. Melee engage. Character attack. No. Patrols. I don't need to change that yet. Graphics. We're good on that. The only thing I don't like is how slow we move when in stealth mode. That's going to be, um, that's going to be so annoying. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and level up. You have unspent talent points. With each level, you can increase one of your character's attributes, might, finesse, quickness, wits, vitality, or resolve. Each of these attributes provides benefits to your character as well as increases one or more skills. Increasing an attribute costs one point until the attribute score reaches 19. To raise an attribute from 19 to 20 requires two attribute points. Okay. Um, and let's see. I... What do I want? I kind of want more accuracy. Uh, I kind of want to make sure. You know what? No, I mentioned cooldown. Man, that's at 15, though. But you know what? It just feels like I'm going way too slow. So we're going to increase that one more. And then I definitely want more lore. I'm not sure how that works. Yes, I'm going to save those changes. And then what's this? Oh, so I get one talent point. Okay. So I know I definitely don't care about defense. Power, I'm sure, is melee. Don't care about power. Definitely going to care about range. What's agility? What are the dual, oh, dual wielding, lead kick. Okay, so that's melee. And then, so we got range. I'm definitely going to care about range. Magic, I'm going to care about magic more than likely. And then what's leadership? Party right, gains two additional quick slots. Abundant arms. What's this? Plant your banner on the field, battlefield. You and your allies near the banner regenerate health and receive a bonus to damage. This is interesting. Once per combat, our grants additional spell slots to everyone in the party. Hmm. Possible. Possible. But uh, we de we know we definitely want both. Let's see what's going uh, <gasps> Grants a bonus to lore skill. You know what? I'm feeling low on the lore skill, so I want that. Grants additional spell slots. Probably going to want that as well. Um, let's see. Evasive. Web, increases weapon damage with bows and allows basic attacks to strike multiple times. That sounds like something I want also. Throne mastery. Arrow catch. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to want um, both of these. And what's this? Dark in the sky. Target an enemy, then launch multiple projectiles into the air. Each one strikes a random enemy within the selected area, rooting them. Hmm. All right. Um, I think we're going to start with the bonus to, uh, to lore. What's this? Uh, this is a quest. What's this? Oh, uh, how all the different folks feel about me. Wrath. Oh, so you get abilities even if you have high wrath with a particular group. That's good to know. Yeah, let's get all the wrath we can with uh, Voices Under Rock. All right. Interesting, interesting, interesting. This stream is getting me in the mood to play Pillars of Eternity again. <laughs> nice. Because you can't buy it on Xbox PC only. Uh, what can't you buy on Xbox? You can buy Pillars of Eternity on Xbox. Just mainline Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2 over the past month and a half. Sitting juice in my veins. <laughs> your Black Geyser content was how I found your channel. Really? Wow, Black Geyser brought new people to my channel. That's fascinating. Well, glad to hear it, James. Glad you're still here. Stealth thing there is a button to speed up the game. Forgot what it was. Oh, okay. All right, I'll have to look for it. 
Uh, Black Geyser is a isometric CRPG in the same vein of Pillars of Eternity and um, Baldur's Gate. I have a review of it on my channel. Um, it's a great game. I remember it being relatively cheap as well, especially considering how much content you get. And the developer did a, a successful Kickstarter so they could have an expansion for the game. Highly recommend you check it out. It had a summoner class that I felt like was really, really cool. I had a great time uh, using that particular class. Uh, Black guys are there working on an expansion. I don't think the expansion has actually released yet. Attorney has someone commented on it. Uh, seeming more, con oh, 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 more console friendly. Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't think Tyranny is available on Xbox. You, you're right about that. All right. Uh, Sigil of Lightning. I don't remember how all this works. Expression used to create spells that affect single targets near the caster. Expression used to create spells that affect distant targets. Right. Right, and then we had a bunch of different things. I'm going to have to look at this, and I'm not in the mood just yet. Spells are created using two or more sigils. The core sigil determines the type of magic, such as fire, frost, or illusion. The expression sigil determines how that core shapes itself into the world, such as a ball of fire, or frost enchanting a weapon. Right, okay, so you can enchant weapons with this, right? Is that how it works? You can enchant weapons with it, or you can put it on yourself. So I have that core, such as a ball of fire or frost enchanted. Well, there are several categories of sigils that can ascend a spell, granting greater range, accuracy, and providing bonus secondary effects. Okay, so I, I uh, created a core. The core decides what type of element it is, okay? Um, so if I choose lightning, then expression, I have expression used to create spells that affect single targets near the caster. I don't need that. Expression used to create spells that affect distant targets. Okay. And then um, this is duration. Oh, and then you can uh, uh, affect different aspects of it. Range, intensity, accuracy, recovery, armor penetration, interrupt. Right, and the more you use these, the more lore that is required in order for you to properly use them. Okay, that makes sense. And then uh, accent that increase the range of spells. So... Originally, it would be, what would be the range originally? Base 10 through 8. Stun affliction for 1.9 seconds. Oh, radius of 1 meter. Um, but it doesn't increase it for this type. Okay. All right. Options. Uh, interesting options. We'll, we'll circle back to this. To begin creating a spell, select the core sigil for the type of magic followed by the expression sigil to determine what form it's going to uh, take. Right. OK. Uh, for example, if you want to create a fireball spell, you will select the sigil of flame as the core, followed by the sigil of directed force to determine its shape. Spells are default names based on the selected core and expression. You can rename your spell using the spell interface. Each sigil requires a certain amount of lore skill to, to learn. Uh, and the characters must have a lore skill equal uh, skill, at least equal to the spell's total difficulty in order to cast the spell. Once you have created a spell, use the assign button to add that spell to one of your active party members. You can assign a spell to more than one character. If you want to modify the spell later after you discover more sigils, select the spell from the party member you wish to modify. The interface will populate with that spell's information, allowing you to modify it and save your changes. You can customize your spells by selecting different icons. If you create multiple spells using the same core and expression, but with different accents, these icons will help you differentiate your spells. Each spell has a default name, but you can customize your spell's name to reflect the accents you've added to the spell. Some accent sigils allow you to modify the area of effect or range of your spells. When you use these sigils, the casting UI will display the increased range as a second, more transparent area beyond the base area of the spell. I wonder if it's viable to create somebody who's good at bowls and good at magic. Because I just remembered, I, um, I feel like it was taking forever in between using certain uh, uh, skills. So, you know, we're going to try this out. We're going to try this out. Uh, so this is for spells used to create spells that affect distant targets. Area of, uh, so we could add what an area of effect accents that um, increase the area. Oh, wait. Nope. Can't do that, though, because it would cause it to be 48. Accents that, uh, that increase the duration of a spell's effects. Oh, so I could stun them for a longer period of time. Uh, Interesting. That doesn't appear to help. So here, let's do this. Assign. 
there. Now you, um, reset. She can't even do anything, right? She, uh, lore 15. Oh, she could, she could have one as well. So she could have a charged fist or she could have one that's for distant enemies. Oh, and this, and now with the charged fist, usually it's a range of two meters. She can increase it to where it'll have it at, for at least four meters. And now she has a spell. Interwesting. Interwesting, interwesting, interwesting. Uh, 55, that's not going to work. 45, yeah, so we could just assign this to her, though, just in general. Okay. All right. Definitely looking forward to playing around more with that. I got the thing that's over there. Um, One of you was saying, okay, so, oh, there's six camping, six out of eight. Camp and remove on wounds. Okay. Um, oh, if I do right alt, is that the one? No. Yeah, it seems like uh, the sinking goes slowly no matter what. I don't need to make it before it starts pouring. Take care, queen. Hit how many CRPGs are PC only. Mm-hmm. Tyranny and Pills of Eternity were because they want to go console with it before it fail. Oh. Oh, yeah, but I mean, uh, spellcrafting is a huge, huge part of Tyranny. This is one of the best spellcrafting. This is be one of the best magic systems I've ever seen in the game. I'd had my eye on Black Eyes for years, but when it came out, almost no one covered it. Your review is one of the top in the YouTube search. Nice! Well, 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 you know, some people just don't have taste. All right, before we head out, um, uh, let's do, yeah, like, I prefer that. And you should be the one in front because you're going to be our tank long term. Let's speak with verse. Couldn't help but notice how you are eyeballing the disfavored symbol littered about the camp. Eh, it's hardly a symbol, just a scrawl. It's true, but it used to be the pride of Gra Graven Ash's legion before Kairos made them to face it. Eh, what happened? Word has it that Ash has been under more scrutiny than the other Archons, seeing as he took a stand against Kairos in the past. Even though he bent the knee in the end, that doesn't place him above suspicion. Kairos and the other Archons keep him on a tight leash. Ash's troops impressed the growing empire, but Kairos made them sacrifice everything they were up to the point Ash surrendered. They've been disfavored ever since and fighting to earn back their honor. I guess that's why you don't cross the overlord. Kairos holds a grudge with a mean, jealous streak. Actually, I have other questions. Go on, then, verse 9. What do you need? Are you a spy for the voices of Narat? Verse regards you with an unreadable expression. Her mismatched eyes look at each of yours in turn. I mean, does it even matter? You don't have to decide for yourself whether or not I'm worth trusting. Is keeping me along worth the risk that I'll spill the occasional word about what you ate for breakfast? <laughs> the voice of Narad is the archon of secrets, not the archon of dishonesty or fair dealings. If you don't assume that everyone already reports to him, you're not being careful enough. Tell me about your time with the Scarlet Chorus. The Scarlet Chorus is mostly for madmen and peasants with rusty daggers, but it's also a little niche of freedom that I never had. Once I survived training and met my Scarlet Fury sisters, I saw a different side of the howling mob. Apollo, what's going on, man? How are you? This magic sister reminds me of Magicka, which was heckin' awesome. Really? I never played Magicka. As my first pillar player, I found Pillar turning to Wizard to be less fun, especially without all the cool special grimoires and unique spells. I do feel like Wizard is better in Pillars of Eternity than uh than Deadfire. Yeah, but he stands for Kira. That's why they're PC only. I mean, I understand what you're saying, Hokadi, but it's still nice having an option on console. To be honest with you, uh, the first time I played Pillars of Eternity was on console. It wasn't on PC. And then I decided to go back to get the PC experience to see what all the hype was about. Uh, Rogue Trader is definitely on console as well. Yep. Tell me about your training. For our new recruits shoved to the front lines, training means surviving the first battle. Anything beyond that is for the fighters who show potential, whether as blade dancers or arcane madmen. There's nothing in the world like getting put through the paces as a Scarlet Fury. Every day is a test of your commitment and passion. Failure means death. The first few weeks were the hardest, but also the most rewarding. I earned my name, picked up some quality weapons, and met my sisters. You earned your name? 
Oh, so this is like Pillars of Eternity, where they randomly decide what does and does not have voice acting. If you think a simple farmer from the tears would name their, her child Verse, I suggest you visit my old village. Most of them were walking around with certain names like Barrel or Fish. Not the most creative bunch. She smirks and shakes her head. The chorus takes your name away. Wherever you were before, you aren't that person anymore. Then you earn back a name through great deeds, usually murderous ones. That's why you see choir men walking around with names like Stink Mouse or Face First. There's probably a good reason for it. Voices of Narak gave me this name. When the, score, when the Scarlet Chorus runs howling into battle, he doesn't hear war. He hears a symphony. And when I fight with blade or bow, he told me that my music sounds out louder than anyone else's and contains too many parts to be easily defined. When you least suspect it, the Archon of Secrets can be downright charming. Tell me about the Scarlet Furies. The elite fighters of the Scarlet Chorus. Your typical horde recruit fights with a rusty spoon and a chip on his shoulder, but the Scarlet Furies are, well, different. Um, I definitely want to play Baldur's Gate. Uh, I, I, I probably won't. I might not live stream Baldur's Gate 1. I'm not sure, but I definitely want to live stream Baldur's Gate 2. Um, I, what I really had planned to do was do a back-to-back a -back live stream of Baldur's Gate 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 so that we could see how they kind of line up. We might still do that, to be honest with you. I might, I might finish this, play through the Dragon Age series, and lead up to Dragon Age Deadfire, uh, uh, Dread Wolf rather, not Deadfire, Dragon Age Dread Wolf, and then maybe play Baldur's Gate 1, 2, and 3 back to back to back to see the evolution. We focus our madness. We coordinate, we kill, we dance. It's like art. Imagine a sculpture that twisted in weird, beautiful angles and then gutted you too fast for you to realize what was happening. Oh, wow. That, that's truly a hot take, James. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 2 over one all day. Uh, it sounds wonderful. It is, as I remind myself all the time. The most important day of my life was when the voices of Narat recognized my potential and sent me to Scarlet Fury training. <laughs> I see Kung Shu is against it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Paul, I'm planning to do a full playthrough of Tyranny. Now, the CSC RPG stats were cool. <laughs> Dragon Age Origins is awesome. Yep, we're definitely going to stream that on the channel. I take both BG1 and 2 are nearly unplayable for anyone who isn't crippled by nostalgia. <laughs> what? Baldur Gate 2 story is incredible. Baldur's Gate 2 has an incredible story. Come on now. What's your real name? That question isn't worthy of, oh, that question, I gained some fear with her. That question isn't worthy of either of us, but I'll entertain it out of pity. You already know me by my real name. It's Verse. Are you looking for whatever arbitrary collection of letters and sounds my mother thought was appropriate when she didn't even know me? Then you're out of luck. I buried that name a, a long, that, I buried that name a long time ago? Long by my standards, anyway. Tell me about your weapon skills. When I was just a kid, it didn't take me long to realize I was a natural. I could pick up a rusty kitchen knife and skewer a rat from across the room. The Scarlet Chorus gave me opportunities to further educate myself. My sisters were always a bit surprised by how quickly I took to different fighting styles. She frowns for a moment and then shakes off whatever she wanted to say. Back to my question about the Scarlet Chorus. You know what? No, that, that pissed me off. I'm sorry, I got to go back. I didn't mean to gain fear with her. And does Joker really care about her real name? You know, that probably is kind of consistent with what he would ask, but still. Still, still, still. Uh, what happened? Yeah, I actually have other what questions. What do you need? Uh, tell yeah, me something you, about until yourself. Then? Tell me about your life before course. What of your parents? If you aren't there in your trial of course. Oh, I must not have asked that. Do you ever wish you could do things over and end up somewhere other than Kairos's army? That's as naive a question as I've ever heard. Kairos is everywhere. If you aren't in the Overlord's army, you're being trampled by it. Of course, I could have labored on the family farm into my maturing years, married some dolt, and littered him a nursery of squealing piglets. Having my body torn to pieces by smaller versions of me sounds like fun. Then one day, when I decided enough was enough, I'd slit my husband's throat over breakfast and run off to join the chorus anyway. My way saved a lot of time. 
Burr smooths back the feathers in her hair and shakes her head with a smile. You're a killer. Better to stick with the chorus. At least you understand. The chorus praises and rewards the things in inside me that I would suppress as civilized company. Life is too short to repress every desire, right? Especially if I have anything to say about it. How did you get conscripted? How did I? I think you had the wrong idea about me. The chorus didn't take me as a sobbing maid. I strode into their camp and enlisted. Someone tossed me a dented blade. I lived through initiation, spent a week butchering my neighbors, and moved on with my new kin. I didn't waste time with goodbyes. My mother had long since died, and the rest of my family were louses. The girl I used to be, even she knew that she was worth more than all of them combined. What is the significance of your feathers? Ooh. Oh, I don't tell that story to just anyone. You have to butter me up before you get any really intimate details. Interesting, huh? Hopefully I remember... Chat, remind me to circle back to this <laughs> and the first one when we have more reputation. Enough questions about the past. Tell me about your time with the Scarlet Chorus. The Scarlet Chorus is mostly yep, for... Tell me about your training. There's nothing in the... Tell me about the Scarlet Fury. Our... It Sounds is. wonderful. As I... You earned your name. Uh, we'll skip what's your near, real name. Tell me about your weapon skills. Uh, yep, we did that. And go back to my other questions. What do you cool. need to know? Um... Who are the Scarlet Corps leaders? There we go. Um, sure, it's a good story, but playing is exercise and fucking torture. <laughs> Honestly, BG2 has a way better story. Exactly. Oh, so it's the gameplay? Yeah. Yeah, the gameplay is rough. Really needs Icewind Dale 2 remaster and Icewind Dale 3. Do you feel like the gameplay is better in those, Hockety? The only problem with beat Baldur's Gate is getting out of level one as a first-time player is rough. Otherwise, perfect game. I didn't like chasing the sister so much in the second. Pathfinder Kingmaker is playable on PC. I haven't encountered any game breaking bugs. Yeah, it's janky, though. It's janky. <laughs> but I, I was playing through it for a while. In fact, I, I definitely plan to go through it. But Baldur's Gate 2 is a worse adventuring party story, and the higher-level gameplay is a pain. The game is broken in terms of balance. I will say if you use... If you're used to D&D D &D 3.5 and on for RPGs, BG1 and 2 have barrier to enter. Is this game giving an analysis of the psychopathic behavior that is incentivized by the military? <laughs> Spicy, I like it. <laughs> Young blood, what's going on? How are you? <laughs> well, the verse of the ride is a spider at the center of the web. He acts like the army belongs to him, and he only lends it to Kairos because it suits his purposes both of which are true. The rest are all shoots of the voices, like the fifth eye. Once you get down to the rank and file, the Scarlet Corps organize around a motley bunch of gang bosses who call the shots. What do you want to know? Tell me about the voices of Narad. He's a madman, but that never stopped me from following his orders. Even in a legion as cutthroat as the Corps, you know better than to get on the voices' bad side. People who cross him, or just people he meets, don't tend to survive the experience. If he ever seems disorganized or lost, it's because he's channeling one of the personalities he's devoured over the years. His mannerisms shift over to someone else, someone who's probably long since dead. Better to die than become part of the voices. What makes the voices of Narat so powerful? He's the Archon of Secrets, and he didn't earn that title lightly. People say that he knows more than every sage in the tears combined, and that he could think a thousand steps ahead of the other Archons. It would be putting it lightly to say he's never alone under that disapproving helmet of his. If you make secrets your business, I guess having people constantly whisper in your ear is a good thing. I usually want people to shut up, but to each their own. Tell me about the fifth eye. A walking nightmare, that one. I couldn't begin to guess who lives under that armor and speaks with that reedy voice, but I'll tell you what I know. When your world is built on secrets, it pays to have a few extra eyes. The voices of Narat has eyes in abundance, some that he keeps close and others that he sends out in the wilderness. Whoever the fifth eye was before he came into the Archon service, now he's just a half-mad jabbering speech hole, a bodily function. In other words, an eye. Huh. Wait, Narat's eyes are people? Maybe they used to be people. Whatever they were, they're eyes now. Folks like to whisper that the voices of Narat takes his servants and cuts out all the extra parts that they don't need. She makes a quick, snipping gesture with her fingers. I once heard the voices in the fifth eye in the tent together. The voices kept screaming, redundancies, redundancies. Every time, another gout of blood would spray on the canvas walls. I can't even guess what he was cutting out. How many eyes does the Archon of Secrets have? And the number keeps changing, either because it grows or because rumors don't mean shit. Three, seven, nineteen. Some even say that all of us are eyes and we don't even know it. 
She shakes her head in thoughtful disapproval. It's one of those questions that drives you mad if you allow yourself to think about it for too long. Hey, you could be one of Tunin's eyes, but you never thought of that. <laughs> Back to my other questions. Go on, then. Tell me about the gang bosses. A boss is anyone who can rally enough support to kill the previous boss. They cling to command until someone gets wise and stabs them in the back. Tipcap leads the filthy lands. Lox leads the rusted harps. Sharp used to lead the bone boys. Couldn't say where he ended up after he broke his legs. Waterwheel orders around the hairy hunters. Halls for shit leads the lazy malkins. Then scurvy queen, finger food, and wild gash collectively lead the ladies of perpetual strangulation. I'm forgetting at least a dozen more. I've even led a gang or two in my day. They never survived very long, so no point in getting attached. You led a gang? Don't act so surprised. I can crack a whip better than any of those daisies at the disfavored labor camps. But I was never that interested in the power struggle of those grunts and scabs in the middle. I wanted to stand on the top like an apex predator. Here I am. So when I got tired of a gang, I disbanded and let the other bosses fight over the new recruits. That much, amu that much amused me, at least. Some of my old mates are still alive and hanging around wherever they ended up. Back to my questions. I like your curiosity. Um, so let's see. Who are your sisters? Who were they would be more appropriate? Three Whispers, Red Geyser, and Seeking Sheath. Best fighters I ever met. There wasn't a foe we couldn't take down together. Our fighting styles complemented perfectly, so we di divided up the killing work like bards sharing a song. At least we used to. She presents a solemn salute. Hmm. Thack. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of the Thacko system either. <laughs> See, Bird seems very much like Santa's kind of lady. A hundred percent. You know it. You can tell. <laughs> tell me about Three Whispers. She was as calm as the surface of a pond and light on her feet. More than one foe tripped and fell on their own blade due to Whispers' crafty footwork. Verse lets her gaze slip away from you as a fleeting moment of sorrow steals her attention. Tell me about Red Geyser. A one-armed, one-woman siege breaker. She would launch herself at her foes like a battering ram. Not even a disfavored phalanx could have withstand that dumb suicidal winch. Kairos' eyes, but she was something to behold. Verse slams her fist into her palm. Tell me about seeking sheath. That girl could pass a spear through twelve rings from the far side of a battlefield. Kairos helped any foes who approached her march in single file. She made a game of spitting as many soldiers as possible on the same javelin. What happened to them? We were scouting around Vendrin's well during the siege, back when we only suspected the guard of organizing in secret. My sisters and I came upon a group of them, or Kairos knows. Maybe they found us. No one said anything. We drew iron and bronze. That was when everything went wrong. I was supposed to take point and occupy the guard with a dance of blade work, something disorienting while my sisters picked their marks. I hesitated. I lost my nerve. Instead of rushing the oath breakers, I froze with my weapon drawn. My sisters fought on without me, but they were off balance, like whatever I had was catching. They died. I lived. My sisters were relying on me to lead the dance, and I failed them. Your actions were inexcusable for a fighter of your station. You're absolutely right. If I had witnessed the same in one of my sisters, I might have even killed her for endangering the rest of us. Good thing for me that they didn't get the chance. She chuckles, but there's no humor in it. Hesitation is a rot. It's unbecoming of any chorus member and unheard of in a scarlet fury. I would cut it from my body and catarize the wound if, if only I knew its source. She grimaces once more and turns inward, contemplating. Any thoughts on the topic, or are we just here to open old wounds? Any idea why you lost your nerve in battle? I wish I had an explanation. For the first time, I lost the dance. The song of murder drew silent. Instead, there was only rigid, organized control. I have more questions about your sisters. Uh, back to my question about you need the Scarlet to know? Course. Before, you hesitated when you brought up your fighting styles. Why? Loyalty too. Oh, look at that. We're moving on up with the loyalty. It's occurred to me that in this game, it's only iron and bronze that we've seen so far, which is unique. Yep. Absolutely. I think there are uh, higher levels of weapons, though, but you have to work towards it. Notice that, did you? It's uh, a matter that I'm not used to discussing, mostly because I don't know how. 
I mentioned before that I'm good at picking up different weapons and fighting techniques. The truth is, I'm better than good. I can flay a man so cleanly that I'd leave a single strip of skin behind. He wouldn't even need to be tied down. That was one of the first things I discovered about myself after joining the Scarlet Corps. The voice of Narat recognized it in me as well, which is why he singled me out for Scarlet Fury training. Have you tried that flame trick before? Let's just say that when we ran out of canvas for pitching tents, the fifth eye handed me a knife and pointed me to the prison pen. She winks. My sisters were the masters of their fighting forms, but since they died, my style has changed almost like, like I can kill as they did. I could pick up a bow, a lance, anything really. I could tear someone to pieces with a weapon that I only watched my sisters use. I don't know what it could mean, and that worries me. Let me ask you about something else. What do you need to know? How is it that you picked up your fallen sister's weapon skills? That's been on my mind for some time, and I still don't have an explanation that fits. I have a few ideas, but verse frowns in deep thought. Scarlet Fury share a sort of link. It's how we coordinate our dance in the heat of battle. We don't pass messages or anything, but our emotions and intentions sync up without words. She starts worrying one of her knives. After a moment, she sighs and slaps the blade back into its sheath. Go on. The one thing I always knew was that I felt this connection more keenly than my sisters did. I could pick up nuances that they missed, and I could feel them from farther away. When my sisters died, I felt each of them getting yanked out of my brain like someone pulling snails from a garden. But some of their slime residue was still there. Does that make any sense? You should exploit this skill to its fullest potential. Skill? Not sure if i call it that. There's something parasitic about it, but I take your point. If there's an advantage to this thing I'm experiencing, I'm not above using it against our foes. No matter how you paint this, some part of my sisters broke off in me when they died, and now I'm left to deal with it. Just another day in the tears, right? What are your thoughts on the disfavored? A warren of self-entitled children so wound up in delusions of honor, they're likely to hang themselves by their own high standards. I wish they had stayed in the Northern Empire where they belong. Then we could get some real work done in the tears. It's fascinating that they throw all this dialogue at you from the very beginning. It's coming back to me a little bit. I think, like, all of her stuff is right up front, and then she spends the rest of the game, like, she'll have banter, but as far as one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's very, very little. Closest theory about Terry is that it's a Wuxia setting in disguise. What is Wuxia? The random hecking voice lines are the jump scares. It's so unnerving. <laughs> no, I think Cosmic is talking about the way they randomly just start voicing uh, the character. Ran the character voice randomly just comes up. <laughs> Jovi, what's going on? Yeah, I'm definitely enjoying Tyranny. I'm having a great time with it. What do you think of their leader, Graven Ash? I've seen enough of that high-minded braggart to know that he's all duty. Nothing but a charismatic, broad-shouldered scarecrow. He calls himself the Archon of War, though by the way he stalls his forces waiting for a better strategy to present itself, you would think he's afraid of battle. You would think that someone more deserving would take Ash's mantle from him, but the disfavored have this cult of personality built around their great general. In their eyes, he could do no wrong. What about Ash's connection to his troops? Graven Ash protects. His soldiers keep harping on those words like they mean something. I don't deny that the disfavored can take a few extra lumps on the battlefield, but that only speaks to their thick-headedness. If anything, it's only true because his soldiers place that much trust in it. I've seen the power of suggestion do stranger things to people. Could that be possible? We're talking about a man who's centuries old and wears glowing armor. You tell me. Who would you see take Ash's place? I would rather let the disfavored sort it out among themselves. Graven Ash is this aging figurehead of what should be constantly changing role. The right soldier needs to grow a pair and kill the old man. Kick his cane out from under him. Remind the Legion what strength looks like. The voice of Narat changes. He's a multifaceted gem, and the Scarlet Chorus is a reflection of that beauty. If someone could rise up and strike down the voices, any of us would follow them in a heartbeat. I suppose you have a better idea how to handle this as favorite forces? You know what? It's interesting she says that, because I'm pretty sure even if you kill the voices, the Scarlet Chorus doesn't just fall in line behind you. Of course I do. First, I stop babying the troops. Pain is a lesson best learned early. I'd conscript from the locals to bolster the front lines, because why waste your elite on the vanguard? Then I'd leave any misplaced ethics back in the Northern Empire. They're not helping Kairos' campaign anyway, so fuck them. 
<laughs> Excellent. You would make them more like the Scarlet Chorus. Would that be so wrong? The Chorus is accountable for itself in the ways that the disfavored aren't. Our weak die, and the strong keep uh, fight to keep their rank. Reputation ability. Oh, I have another one. You've gained enough reputation to unlock a new ability. Open the reputation UI by pressing R to see the new ability available to your character. Most factions have abilities your character can acquire as you build reputation with them. In order to acquire these abilities, you must build enough favor or wrath with the faction. Reputation abilities are not only granted to your character. Reputation abilities are only granted to your character, not to other party members. Interesting. Okay. Team disfavor. <laughs> uh, I do have the DLCs installed, Apo. Uh, Wusa is a Chinese genre of kung fu heroes. Uh, Toriyama stole from Wusa to make DBA, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, that's interesting. I, honestly, I think the worst thing in Ball's Gate 2 was ability drain. Getting hit by a vampire without negative plane protection, losing half your level each hit sucks. Yep, and recovering it cripples you until rest. This is true. I remember that very well. I wanted his favorite companion just to get the other side of this argument. It's on the way, abandonment. Don't worry. Would that be so wrong? The chorus is... Oh, yep, we just read this. The disfavored promote their waning bloodline and discipline any soldier with the audacity to show their teeth. Though they'd never admit it, the disfavored need the chorus to show them the way. Back to my main questions about the disfavored. Uh, do you think the disfavored have a chance to succeed in the tiers? Speaking as one of the exceptions, most of the tiers men are pushovers. The people of Stalwart seem capable enough, though I have my doubts. You might call them the disfavored's best challenge. Even if they succeed, it might be too late to redeem themselves. The chorus have already impacted the conquest more than the disfavored have, or likely ever will. What are your thoughts on their battle strategies? They've really got something with that phalanx maneuver, a formation built on holding still, moving forward slowly, and hoping that no one slips in the mud. <laughs> At best, the disfavored are tired of using the same tactic over and over again. At worst, the enemy knows what to expect out of them. Scarlet Furies are dancers. We hear the music of battle and organize ourselves into works of killing art. Every fight is as hot and passionate as the last, with no room for stale routine. Let me ask about something else. Um, what do you think of those who defy Kairos' authority? The Tears men can either fight or submit to Kairos' peace, and only one of those options captures my interest. I suppose I appreciate when they go down fighting. If they did otherwise, I would need to find another excuse to flay them. They need to understand whether we unify the Tears under a shared banner or at the bottom of a mass grave makes little difference to you, me, or Kairos. That's an interesting view of the conquest. It's a pragmatic one, anyway. The Scarlet Corps caught on to the idea at the beginning of the campaign. If no one objects that we're here to carve a bloody path for gain and amusement, then by all accounts, that is our purpose. Besides, unification is such a vague concept that Kairos allows the disfavored and the Corps to interpret it as they will. The Overlord is concerned with results. I'm happy to focus on the details, especially if that means cutting off a farmer's legs while his family watches their land burn. She smiles at a pleasing memory. <laughs> no shame in taking pleasure in your work. No, no, there isn't, Fate Binder. I suspect that we're going to make something great together, a line of bodies stretching as far as the old walls. It's going to be beautiful. She looks at you with renewed interest. <laughs> Did you fight in any notable battles? I spent some time in Azur toward the end of the war. Beastmen ripped my unit apart. We thought they might be working under Karen's orders, but we never found out for sure. Let's change the subject. You learned a thing or two about fighting in the Scarlet Corps. Care to duel? That would be an understatement, and I thought you'd never ask. Since you're obviously at a huge disadvantage, I'll let you pick our weapon of choice. I'm obviously at a huge disadvantage. Wow. <laughs> Slander, you prefer voice protagonists with four options like Mass Effect or unvoiced with more options like Tyranny? If I'm playing by myself, I prefer voice protagonists. If I'm streaming, I prefer unvoiced protagonists because I feel when the characters are unvoiced, it's easier for me to feel confident that I'm providing content that actually entertains the audience because I get to voice the characters myself. I get to add little inflections. Sometimes I add a little extra from the dialogue that's there. So I'm constantly trying to find ways to make it more entertaining for us to go through the dialogue. 
Whereas if it's voiced, then I'm not using my voice myself and I have to kind of forced dialogue and conversation. I'm used to playing games by myself. So I'm really used to sitting for hours on a couch, not saying a damn thing, just playing a game. So being in a mode where the characters are all talking, but I still need to talk to be a good host and streamer, um, that's, that's different for me. It's kind of a little bit out of character. So I prefer games like this. Level Drain, worst Pekata ever. <laughs> Uh, what the future Dragon Ball? We shall see. It, it, it's definitely going to be different. It's definitely going to be different. What's going on, Mega? How are you, Postal? What's up? Level and ability drain Pathfinder is better than 3.5 D&D. Yeah, I feel like uh, level drain definitely is more manageable in Wrath of the Righteous than it is in Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, interesting. I'm not familiar with the Odyssey, can't you? DBZ suck because... Toriyama wrote the damn thing under blackmail from his editors. Really? Tell when he was done because the humor would just go away entirely. Uh, why you say? Why did they have to blackmail him? You might have heard people talk about uh, Wusa in real life. It's pronounced sort of like uh, Wushi. Oh, Wushi. Okay. Interesting. Nope. This is the first time hearing about it, but if uh, DBZ is based on it, uh, obviously there's some characters aligned with it that I really enjoy. RPGs with voice main character often sacrifice actual twists and consequence. Look at how they gutted. We don't know. We don't know if they've gutted twists and consequence in Bloodlines 2. And I, I'm not going to side with all you people saying that it absolutely has to be trash. There's a possibility we're going to get an amazing Vampire the Masquerade game. And that's what I'm sticking to until I play the game and I see otherwise. Mind you, I agree that the little snippets of gameplay we've seen aren't really all that impressive. Uh, well, I think they're better. I think the combat looks better than the original, but all the other stuff surrounding it doesn't look better. But we don't know. We don't know yet, and I'm not going to poo-poo on this game. <laughs> I want to decide how I feel. Not to be told how I feel by the voice actor. Um, I, I don't prefer... Uh, unvoiced always because sometimes I feel like having a voice character allows you to see a character in a way that you wouldn't have been able to if you had just come up with your own voice in your mind like Adira in Rogue Trader uh, when the beta was out Adira didn't have a voice I actually found her dialogue to be pretty boring but then when Rogue Trader came out and you could hear her voice acting I was like oh this is actually a pretty cool character like the voice actor did a lot to add energy and life into that character. Uh, I thought the uh, characterizations in Mass Effect were incredible. And the voice acting really, really made you connect with that character. And he has iconic lines that are voiced in very, very specific ways that people have latched on to over time. All right, how about bows? Let's play target practice. If you want to risk becoming a pincushion, it's your funeral. But you're right about one thing. This will be fun. Oh, I gained five bold skill ranks. You take turns loosing blended arrows, using each other's moving targets. Versus an accomplished runner and swats the few projectiles that get close out of the air. When her turn arrives, it takes all of your energy to keep up with her relentless volley of projectiles. You observe her technique and take a valuable lesson to heart. <sighs> you held your own. Call me impressed. Need anything else or did I tire you out? Hmm. Let's rest. Did you play the first game? Uh, what first game, Mega? Oh, the first Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? I played it, and there's a review for it on the channel. They blackmailed him because uh, Dragon Ball was a gold mine. He meant the end of Dragon Ball to be the end of the entire series. Oh! The, the editors gave him the you'll never work in this town again threat to get him to write. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. Hey, poll, you subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much. Glad you've been enjoying this enough where you felt uh, compelled to subscribe. Welcome. I'm going to slander about VTM2 and Avowed. We do not know if they're going to be bad. I think they're going to be bad. We simply do not know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I try to remain hopeful that upcoming games will turn out amazing. And I try not to get too pessimistic over them. But modern studios make it hard to stay optimistic. I agree with that. I agree. But I'm going to, do, to the best of my ability, I'm going to be optimistic about it. Adira, voice actress, kill it. Her and uh, Marzai, I felt like they were the best. Let's face it, Bloodlines 2 is probably going to be just okay. I doubt it will be bad. It just won't live up to the hype. Uh, see, I think it could absolutely be bad. 
So that's why I'm just taking a step back and I'm just going to wait. It just is what it is. Heard something about that shortly after that. You have to know it's not going to be the same, right? Yep. It's not going to be the same. Ha! As long as it isn't a quadruple egg NFT game. Nah, I would definitely not get that. <laughs> Are you a spy for the voices of Narat? Uh, we already read that part. I was. And to be perfectly fair, I think I've been more or less transparent about it. But that doesn't change anything about why I chose to travel with you. If I didn't want to, I'd just leave. What did the voices want to know? He never told me. He just said to keep an eye on you. But there was an implication that I'd have an opportunity to report in, as if I would have. More likely, it would have stolen my mind and learned everything I knew just to make sure I didn't leave anything out. So if you have any reservations about my discretion, keep that in mind. You were just doing your job. No harm. Well, I'm grateful that we don't have to make a big deal about it and waste our time wondering if we can ever trust each other again. Honestly, it's refreshing. I have thoughts about your combat abilities. Do you now? Call me intrigued. You already know that I memorize the moves of my Scarlet Fury sisters. If it seems like a total mystery to me, I don't know how you could have arrived at any conclusions, but I'm open to ideas. Lore. Your talent reminds me of the voices of Narad. I hope I didn't hear you say that, Fatebinder. Mm. Because the implication is more than either of us is prepared to handle. The voices of Narat is a monster. We both know that Teratus has never seen a creature more despicable than him. Never mind that he's kind of my boss. I'm not comparing you to the voices, only this talent you exhibit my little talent that latches onto my friends and bleeds them dry you mean because i never asked for it i've traveled with the chorus for years i've seen what the voices can do and it scares me all right the idea that everything i am could be reduced to to that if i had that kind of power if i could become like him i don't know how i could live with myself i'd rather drown myself in a camp latrine Damn. Um, uh, the Persona games, are they best played with the English voice acting? Or do you all feel like it's better uh, with the Japanese voices and the English dub? Why such an aversion? Because the voices isn't... I mean, can you even call him human anymore? Gifu, I've become a Berserk fan. I actually... Um, was it last month, I think, for the first time I looked at some of the Berserk cartoon? I've never read the manga, but I looked at some of the cartoon, and it, it's freaking mind-blowing. It's amazing. Amazing storytelling. Everything I am has led me to this point. I joined the chorus, fought to survive, grew stronger than I ever knew I could be. I never needed to steal anything that made me, me. I don't want to be better by being someone else. The Voices is stronger than anyone and terrifying enough to lead the chorus, but he's also an overgrown parasite. And someday he'll stuff himself so full of voices that he'll burst. You don't have to become like him. Just be selective. I'm sure he had the same idea when he got started. But you know what they say about power? It's usually wielded by assholes. My sisters died. Oh, you should have seen us. We were amazing together. I didn't mean to take away what made them special, but I did it all the same. And let me tell you, it felt terrible. If I lived a century, I might never figure out how to make that happen again. And more importantly, I don't want to. We'll talk again later. All right. Finally. Um, how do I see reputation? There we go. Verse. Okay, so we're well past level three. And looks like um, you need a reputation change of major strength to unlock this tier. Interesting. And this tier doesn't matter anyway. So, oh, death from above. Launch Versa to the air, allowing her to unleash a series of well-aimed arrows on, into the target from above. Each of these arrows strikes true and has armor penetration. <clears throat> Range, 25 meters. Okay. Okay. Um, hopefully this means that I don't have to be close in order to use it. All right. And sorry, let's go in here because we got, then we have some other stuff that we just recently picked up. Yep. Uh, Joker doesn't have enough. So let's bring this out. Um, this is heavy armor. We know we don't have anything for that yet. Let's see. Um, this is light leather gauntlets. You're probably going to need to use this a little bit more. Uh, one 
plus one percent precision. Yep, I think these are a little bit better than what she has. So we'll go ahead and put those, put that in there, and bam! Finally, 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 y'all, we are ready to move forward. Uh, Persona games will eat your life, slander. You might never find another moment to shower again. <laughs> So actually, what I plan to do is, I think that Final Fantasy VII reboot or thing in Majig is going to come out on PC, right? So I think what I'd like to do is play through all the Final Fantasy games, or at least all the good ones. And I was thinking maybe we do Persona first. Uh, this will probably be like this. Probably won't be this year. Maybe next year we'll do Persona three, four, five, and then we'll do Final Fantasy. Since we're going to play the Final Fantasy um, remake, I, I, I probably won't play the original. We'll play Final Fantasy VIII. I never played nine. Is nine good? I definitely like ten. Ten is probably my favorite. We might save ten for last and play the two new ones and then play ten. But I want to play all the Final Fantasies, and I plan to say play Persona 3. If I like three, we'll play four and five probably. If I don't like three, then we'll just leave it at three. All right. Finally, we can move on. Ooh, and only one place to go, the disfavorite camp. It will take me two hours to reach the disfavorite camp. And I'm here. Played English and had no issues. Persona, I think it's whatever you prefer. The whole sub versus dub hardcore stands weird. <laughs> it's not really not that bad. Okay. Played English and had no issues, so I vote you could do it either way. Say one sentence about Berserk, it'll start an absolute war. Berserk friends, no, that is three words actually. <laughs> Well, uh, what three words of that? It, uh, show me where on the doll. Uh-oh. That's why the humor for DZ disappeared throughout DZ and why we kept killing Goku tried in the series. And that's why at the end, Toriyama vowed out of doing manga series again. Oh. The writer of Sailor Moon. I never saw Sailor Moon. Um, what Was it good? Is it up to the same level of quality? Like, Berserk, the best man I can't recommend to anyone in current year. <laughs> uh, I definitely feel like it's something I want to uh, uh, read. I've actually never ran, read a manga before, period. Six great, seven great, eight great, nine great, ten great, ten two, bad. Oh, you know what? I played ten two. <laughs> girly as, oh, you know what? We're definitely going to stream ten two. Ten two is the most girly girly game i've ever played it was almost embarrassing sitting as a as a grown adult band playing 10 2 but i absolutely had to do it to get the true ending for final fantasy 10 so not only did i play it but i played it to get the perfect perfect ending where at the end she's able to reconnect with whatever the name of, of, of that dude was i had to have that ending i almost cried at the end of, of uh final fantasy 10 like, I found that ending so, it was beautiful, but it was also so, so crushing. So when I found out that 10-2 kind of addressed that, I was like, all right, no matter what this game is, I have to play it. 10-2 was a game like, it, you played as th the three chicks, and you got more um, um, powerful by, like, switching up their outfits. Like, it's the most girliest shit I've ever played in my entire life. But I plowed through it. I was determined. I was determined we were going to play that. <laughs> I played 9 and it was quite good. Oh, okay, interesting. So 9, okay, I might have to try 9. My sister forced me to watch it growing up with her. It was good. I know it has a new series. I can't tell you about that. Okay, interesting. You clearly never played Barbie Horse Adventures. Nope, never played that. Can't tell you I have. It was good level design and gameplay-wise. Nice. Nice. Yep, we, we, we might definitely have to do that on the channel. Subterfuge. Take what you like, but leave. Oh, slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. What's that? The voices of Narat told me that you've come as a med mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story, so let's have it out. What's so special about you? Um, I can use lore... What's the point of lying to her, though? Um, you know, I'm going to choose lore, but this is actually a, a gaming type thing. I just want to increase my lore skill. <laughs> I'm actually tallying the expenses of the siege. Is that all? I can understand why Tunin would worry himself over resources, 
but we have the riches of the Northern Empire back in this conquest, not to mention the plunder of the tears. If you say that's the case, I'll go along with it. Verse frowns to herself, but doesn't press the matter. Why so suspicious? Is this the feeling I got? When the Archons are together, the air gets as taut as a bowstring. I can't help but think that no amount of compromise will get them seeing eye to eye. So why invite a mediator from Tunnan's court? It doesn't add up. Why do you think the Archons are at odds? I've been with the Scarlet Chorus since the early days of the conquest, so I can say it's been building for a few years now. There's an energy about those two, like a pair of storms moving to collide. I heard tell that Graven, Graven Ash and the voice of Narat share some bad blood in the Northern Empire, but I don't know any of the particulars. By my authority, the Archons will fall in line. That sounds like exactly the attitude to set this campaign in the right direction. I don't envy you the task of getting them to cooperate, which sounds about as easy as teaching a tornado to heal. At least you sound like you know what you're doing. What else has the voices of Narat told you? Only that I could find you in edgering ruins. Truthfully, I could have picked you out of a crowd. You're the only one of us who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matani River. She laughs, but there's a forced nature to it. I really ought to be meeting with the Archons. The war tent is just past the center of camp. She nods towards the northeast. One last thing. Be careful around these disfavored types. They take their work seriously, and most have suffered way too many blows to the head. <laughs> All right. Nine is the best Final Fantasy. Really? Wow, okay, I've never experienced it. I really like the dress beer system in 10 2, including the transformation sequences. The end of 10 left me with a gaping hole in my heart for Yuna. Yep, that's the same way I felt. I was like, nope, if there's a way to address this, we're going to take it for sure. For sure. Yeah, that's what did it for 10 2, the dress beer system. Mm hmm. You forced me to be a tuxedo mask for the Halloween. Super fun. Honestly, 10-2 gets really dark if you 100% that game. Wish they'd written that better, but oh well. If you 100% it's not dark, you do what you set out for. Yeah, I don't feel like it's dark. Have any of y'all played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? People at work said it was dog shit. Really? All of the media accounts seem to be saying it's fantastic. No, but some of my friends like it. Doesn't seem bad. Open world sucks, though, like always. Hmm. Pain's backstory and Shin's old baggage. It ends happy. It ends happy, but everything up till that was out of character dark for that game. Oh, I see what you're saying. Hmm. Hail, Fate Binder. The disfavored scout nods at your approach. Camp's on up ahead. Don't mind us. Just clearing out the rabble. I still don't understand what I've done to offend. Oh, this is the guy that they were referencing earlier, right? And what is he? Lethians Crossing. Okay. I respect that these are now disfavored lands, and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll, but she's going on about trading rights. What nonsense is that? I'm not allowed to trade one thing for another? It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. The Overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are forfeit. A trade permit? Well, how was I... I mean, to whom would I speak for such a thing? Not us, and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to bash the city and plead your case before Tunnan, but we'll lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That should make the long trek back a little bit more bearable. <laughs> Anything to be argued before Tunnan may be argued before me. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and... The warrior pauses, placing her hand in front of her mouth. If the fate binder wishes to weigh in on the matter, courtesy demands we listen. The soldier clears her throat, looking at you expectantly. This is a disfavored matter, but I know the agents of the court do so love to throw their judgments around. Lady, you're speaking a little too, uh, 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 too loosely to me. You better chill out. <laughs> well, you could rob me now and have my supplies today. The merchant grabs a flask from his cart. Or you can leave me alive and have fermented honey all year long. I even know a few family recipes for painkillers and healing draughts. Certainly, any army will need those. He uncorks a small ceramic vial, and the aroma of cloves and linoleum assaults your nose. Lawbreaker, you have a lot of perishable goods, but no hauling crew. You're just a battlefield looter. I don't... The merchant tenses up, his face flushing red. I don't know what you're getting at. Athletics, pick him up by the collar. How stupid do you think I am? Slow down. I'll tell you everything. Just don't hurt me. 
I found most everything out in the forest of the valley. I'd keep my head low when I heard sounds of combat, then I'd take a look and grab whatever wasn't claimed by the first victors. So then you stole from the disfavored dead? How else did you get your hands on that iron? The scout points to the merchant's cart. You would come here and sell us our own armaments? If anything has an owner, I will return it. But this iron would have turned to rust if left in mud of the battlefield. The disfavored are few in number, is that not right? You need a man like me to gather up supplies that would otherwise go to race. You may trade your wares freely, but lie again and I'll have you killed. But he has no permits. You're allowing this lowborn wretch to profit when he should toil like any other conquered tearsman? Think, Binder. Is it your right to settle disputes when we lock horns with the chorus? But you have no authority on this matter. Hmm. FS7 Rebirth likes to pad out with mini games. Oh, yeah, I heard the mini games are actually kind of whack. Honestly, do not get Final Fantasy games, nor Persona. Japanese writing just relies so much on people with bullshit problems with simple solutions, but with the social skills of an awkward teenager. <laughs> it's hard to disagree with that, but I still find them pretty awesome sometimes. Baraz, what's going on, man? How are you? One of the most intriguing true RPGs ever made and relatively short, which was refreshing. Yep, yep, Tyranny, I, I definitely enjoy it. Definitely enjoy it. Mrs. King, happy Easter. What's going on, Benjamin? How are you? Dark doesn't equal sad. I mean, look at dark humor. Yeah, dark doesn't automatically mean sad. It's not necessarily the same thing. Um, you know, we'll tolerate your presence. Athletics. Are you questioning my judgment? I am. You have the right to step in when we disagree with the course, but this fool is not sworn to an archon and has no protection. The scout runs her hand along her temple, letting out a long hiss of frustration before throwing her arms in the air. You know what? Have it your way, fate binder. This isn't worth a court summons from Tundin. My deepest thanks. I thought I was about to be robbed and left for dead. And here I thought the disfavor would thank me for trying to bring in fresh provisions. I'll be sure to keep my head down and not make any waves. Yeah, you better be grateful. All right. Good. We're good. Um, when I talk to you, thank you for uh, talking down the disfavor from doing worse. Sad times we live in when making a humble living is branded a crime. So saving your hide was worth... Oh, well, naturally. Hagnon clears his throat, his face showing a flash of a scowl. One good deed deserves another. Well, when I have my shop up and running, I'll sell you provisions for a song and give you a proper bounty on any odd bits of weaponry you find, provided that he jabs a finger at you. You keep standing up for me, should those iron goons try to rough me up a second time. You were lucky with us before, merchant. Take care that you don't challenge your luck again. Right. So, uh, what can I do for you? Okay, I'd like to see your wares. Interesting. All right. Iron Walker Helm. Heavy armor, so none of us need that. Heroes Insignia. Immunity to... Frightened and terrified. Potentially good. Uh, sigil of guarded expression. Sure, I'll take that. And the rest of this I'll keep. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. That's my bad. Um, and we'll sell this. And do we have enough lore for this? I do not yet. Okay, fine. Uh, so we'll sell that. And there we go. They won't see right. me coming. Sorry, can't. See, there's got to be a way to speed this up. Are you serious? There has to be a way to speed this up. There has to. So let's all party members formation and camping. Um, and we can camp eight times. Interesting. There's a character, Final Emblem 3, named Bernadette, and her Japanese voice actress takes the high pitch anime girl type voice up to 11. <laughs> Final Fantasy has some nice, nice ploy plots without solution. Tactics and tactics advanced were really good for handheld console on that part. They, they have to provide a way to uh, increase the speed of your. 
Scroll speed, area loot radiant. Just the area in which you can loot multiple bodies. Voice frequency, tooltip delay. Reputation. Here, hold on. Is there a control? Stealth toggle, stealth on and off. Camp. Fast toggle, rest restore speed. What is restore speed? Wait. Pan camera, interface. Hmm, I'm not seeing anything. Uh, yeah, I'm sneaking because that's what's supposed to be necessary in order to make uh, hidden objects appear. But it's on way, it, it, it's um, way too slow. It's way too slow. In, in Dead Fire, they have like a quick stealth option where you can still move fast while stealth. But it appears that they don't have that option here. A humble grave lies before you. A battered sword has been used as a marker. The initial B deeply engraved A modest grave the for the iron. Archon's son, Brennix. We don't bother with funeral rites in the chorus. No point in thanking conscripts for their duty. <laughs> Makes sense. Good thing get the murder rope. <laughs> if you're doing Final Fantasy games, we'd love to see you play through a Final Fantasy uh, VI. I had planned to start with eight. Is Final Fantasy VI worth the playthrough as well? I feel like that'd probably be too old to be uh, streamed well on the channel. The wood used for these parapets is pristine and finely cut. The walls have yet to see any battle. Oh, and by the way, what's going on, Vickery? How are you? The guard, the gate guard holds up a warning hand. Go no farther. You approach this favorite ground. State your business. I am Joker, fate binder of Tunin. I bring word from Kairos. Words for your commander's ears. <laughs> ah, so you're the fire starter. Uh, Sethis and the compa companies returning from the burning library are telling some harrowing stories about Kairos's edict of fire. I think myself brave, but I'm happy to have been far away from it all. Must have been a terrifying honor to be the messenger of such righteous force. Go on in. The soldier gestures towards the gate. The Archons are inspecting you. You'll find them in the war tent, center of camp. Alright. Let's go talk with the Archons first. And then we'll search around all of this area. The scene to remember that people came. I'd really say that's worth a second. You until you did that. Lance. Mm hmm. I hear six is supposed to be the best. Oh, really? Final Fantasy VI and Tactics might be worth it from the older titles. Huh. Yeah, this is very similar to Pillars of Eternity, Queen. Bog, what's going on? The way I remember this, no, you can't improve stealth speed. Unless you're on the hardest difficulty, you don't really need stealth unless you really need alpha strikes. I wasn't using stealth for combat. It was about making hidden items appear. But looks like I have to give up on that as well. So, here's what it is. There's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. While I don't like the way the portraits do different poses as you are in conversations, I do like the animation portion of it when it's standing still. So like the particles coming off of his chest, I think that's really, really freaking cool. Yeah, a slow, fast toggle. I, I, I don't see that. Actia, what's going on? Six is good and has a lot of mechanics, so I think it would probably stream well to talk strategy while you play. Really? Okay. Interesting. There was an Xbox 360 JRPG called Lost Odyssey. Oh, I remember Lost Odyssey, but I never played it. Where English was the lip sync audio while Japanese was a dub. Oh, the English had famous cartoon voice actors in it like Tara Strong. I'm familiar with that name. I don't know Kat uh, Solsi, though. Where is she from? Heavy Rain is one of the worst written stories in gaming history. 
I don't think that's true, get forward. Even if it was, the animation is so incredible. Uh, I remember the first time they released that trailer that showed the how realistic the faces were going to be. And it was just this one lady talking for like five minutes. She was saying crazy stuff too. Fantastic. So good. So really, really cool. Not really good food. It's a lot of bad tropes and stupid decisions. There we go. There we go. Uh, a voice of reason. Thank you, Kung Shu. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with. His profile is made larger still by his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But... I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. The Archon of Secrets passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. You hear the voices in your head. Well, hello there, Fatebinder. We will be with you in just a moment. Emerald luminescence seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is most noticeable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Verse whispers fearfully as she beholds the Archons. Remain silent. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid. For it seems you cannot control your soldiers, or perhaps you simply choose not to. To say that a, a, a man's reputation has gone flaccid? Crazy. <laughs> My lords, the fate binder has arrived. The disfavored commander raises her voice, trying with little success to speak over the Archons. Perhaps we could table this discussion and let our guests speak. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding half would grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? The Archon of Sweet Secrets twirls his scepter in a twisting loop. You hear the voices in your head. Can you hear us, Fate Binder? Cough if we have your attention. His leather wrapped hands flipping the heavy rod with an effortless flow. Why not? Cough audibly. And I thought you had left agents within these tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. The Archon of War lurches forward, resting his weight on his war maul as blue luminescence crackles around his armor. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ashes Folly in your honor. The voices of Narat tosses his scepter into the air, catching it as it descends back down. You hear the voices in your head. Good, good. Now pay attention. You might miss something. Hmm. Lost Odyssey is in full English now since early 2009. Hmm. Was Phil and Lil in Rugrats and Dexter's mom? Oh, okay. I never uh, watched Rugrats or Dexter. That's why I'm not familiar with it. I will say Tyranny is one of the only CRPGs I played in full multiple times. Yeah, it's it's got a nice uh, size, right? Where it's easy to replay it if you want to. It's perfectly timed, in my opinion, with the quicker playthroughs. Exactly. Exactly. That makes it really nice. Really nice. Ruff's art is pretty crisp in this game. Yeah, Benjamin, I'm a big fan of the art in this game. It's pretty cool. Play Lostology in full English, not dumb in 2019. Mm, is Lost Odyssey, Lost Odyssey a good game? Was it worth playing? I think I've ever used stealth it to find hidden objects. Okay, the requirements to spot them were so low, I don't think I ever failed to find anything important after investing in subterfuge a, a bit. All right, then, then I'll stop stealthing. Honestly, Final Fantasy 1 through 6 has been redone, remastered so many times. There are a lot of HD versions out there. Really? Okay. Uh, man, I might uh, end up going um, back beyond 7 then. It's quite the voice. Yeah, I like the voice acting in this game. Uh, recommend for sure. But my hot take. Final Fantasy 4 and 6, I felt are not that good. 
Interesting. Okay, so you don't recommend sex. She really has the nastiest NPCs. <laughs> Absolutely. There's one fight of says again where I recommend the Japanese voice were type zero. The voice director was pretty subpar, despite having some notable voice actors in it, like Matt Mercer and Christina V. Interesting. Which of the two do you like more, Graven Ash or the voices? Voices for me personally. Dexter was a cult classic. Same with Rugrats. Oh, yeah, definitely cult classic uh, uh, cartoons, but I just never watched them. It's very much worth it if you're into turn-based open-world RPGs. Oh, really? Lost Odyssey was turn-based? I didn't know any uh, turn-based games came out specifically for the Xbox. Remain silent. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all-clear report... My troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the <laughs> tearsmen, <laughs> perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief. Barkon flips his scepter three times around, humming gleefully. You hear the voices in your head. Take care that you don't learn too much, Fatebinder. An excess of knowledge, of curiosity even, can earn unwanted attention. Hold your tongue. I will not have you denigrate the honor of our fallen brethren. The commander's hand moves to the hilt of her blade, though the weapon stays sheathed. I'd be doing us all a favor if I cracked open that excuse for a head. They bicker like children, do they not? The fifth eye's grating tenor pierces the tension in the tent, and all eyes land on the crimson spear. I, uh... Meant only to say, welcome, welcome to our guest, the Fate Binder. The armored retainer bows with rust and, and elegance, then rises to a salute. And not a moment too soon. <laughs> the Queen Slayer, sensing your presence, the disfavored commander snaps into a firm salute. No doubt your presence here will strike despair into the hearts of our enemy. Lord Ash, Lord Narat, our guest is here. Uh, let's see. Does he bow? You know what? He bows. Why not? Bow to the Archons. Apologies for the sudden entrance. I've traveled long to be here. <laughs> ah, the fire starter has arrived. Welcome, welcome. Our agents tell us such lovely stories of what you did at the Vellum Citadel. Have you come bearing another fragment of Kairos's wrath in tow? My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drotus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. On the last of his words, the Archon of War glares at the voices of Narat, furrowing his brow as he utters the word camaraderie. <laughs> I require no, uh... Are you all done bickering? I have an edict to proclaim. My dear Binder, we won't be done bickering until the last of Ash's hair falls out. We'll pause for you to read your little missive. Go on, go on, don't keep us all in suspense. For the second time, Brother Tunon selects you for the glory of proclamation. You should be honored. Tell us, what has the Overlord decided to unleash upon the Oathbreakers? It seems that you need some encouragement to work together. Kairos's edict will end the lives of everyone in this valley unless ascension hall is claimed by kairos's day of swords oh i've gained the wrath of the voice of narat interesting the earth sways with each word you utter the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrased commandment it's every syllable drafted by the hand of kairos with the edict proclaimed your pulse quickens and the muscles in your legs worn from a long trip down the mountains feel renewed the tired limbs now nearly violent with vigor. Ooh. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error and no other way out of this valley alive. Nice. Lost Odyssey was a fantastic game. Really underrated. Interesting. Pretty much all JRPGs are better with the Japanese voices, unless they were done with English voices in mind. I never saw Samurai Jack either. Is Samurai Jack a good cartoon? The tooltip dialogue is such a cool idea. Yep. 
Yep, it really helps you be able to keep up with all the different terms that they bring up. The release of the first uh, Nier had two versions, Gestalt on JP360, which had an English class, and Replicant on PS3, which had a Japanese cast. The Replicant remaster had redone voice acting in both. I watched, um, I think maybe the first season of Ben 10. It was pretty, it was pretty cool, I agree. I think he's the Joker of this story, but he ain't ready. Not at all. Although Joker does kind of side with him. Joker uh, likes Narat. It's a shame he's got to uh, put him out of his misery. Because English market uh, tends to prefer English. Yep. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls instead of through. The Archon of War taps a finger against his temple. A low rumble escapes from under his beard. So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the Chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. The Archon of Secrets passes his scepter from one hand to the next. Chuckling softly with each toss, you hear the voices in your head. Watch him squirm. So many tears over replaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. I miss the old Archon of War. You'd never see Blood Echo in a blubbering mess over a few dead killers. He'd use the knuckle bones of his best disciples for jewelry, and even made a breastplate out of his dead brother's uh, rib cage. Because that's how a real man deals with grief. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I kind of want to keep my subterfuge going up, but I also don't want to draw. I think I, I, I think he likes Narod. Uh, but you know what? He doesn't know anything useful. Let's just talk, call it what it is. Subterfuge. They call you the Archon of Secrets, but you certainly don't seem to know anything remotely useful. I second the fate binder. Thought you had the memories of one of those Oathbreakers rattling about that bronze gourd of yours. Would Kairos' mighty spy master please enlighten this gathering of allies with some scrap of strategic insight? The Archon of Secrets turns his head to the side until the face of his mask is turned around and a new face of the mask presents itself as facing forward. When next the Archon speaks, the booming voice of an older man can be heard. Cowards! If I were still alive, I'd freeze the blood as it runs in your veins. You may take the river, but you'll pay for it with your lives. The Archon slaps a hand against his mask, rotating his mask into a new facet looks forward. Our sources tell us the Oathbreakers had some sort of magical trick in store. But this knowledge is tinged with fear, trepidation. If we make a move for the Matani, we suspect the Oathbreakers will mount a counterattack that is equal parts valiant and futile. <laughs> Cosmic, take care, have a good night uh, Bog, this is not my first playthrough But I played it back when it first came out So I barely remember what's in this game I like Berserk, yep yeah, Absolutely, I was a fan of what, what, I've, what I've seen thus far Again, I didn't read the original manga A shame you can save Narat. He's that special kind of mad that's fun to keep around you mean you, a shame you cannot save Narat, right? I don't think it's possible to get through the, the entire game Without having to kill him but it might be. I haven't played this game enough to be able to explore all the different options. It's an anime called Gundam Seed. It was originally dubbed by Canadians, but then Sunrise had post redubbed the series for HD Reminds and now the movie. Fans weren't happy with the new casting and changes of name pronunciations. <laughs> Conquest. I know that voice. Master Hagravar of the School of Tides? Yes, and that old codger put up quite a fight on the way out. Mm. Almost turned himself into a puddle to escape our interrogations. He's not the last of the Tidecasters, though. At the time of his death, there was another. A woman named Ebb. We believe she is one of the mages assisting these Oathbreakers. No more sitting idle. I expect the disfavor to be on the march at once. You've delivered your edict. Do not pretend it gives you the right to give orders to an Archon. My lord, Barrack and his band have been drilled on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runner should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlet to her breastplate. 
and I will ensure the Corps stands ready to march. If the disfavored can take the river, the Corps has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's Chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. The Archon twirls his scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on the shoulder, and the two depart. You hear the voices in your head. Suit yourself, Fate Binder. The more you ignore us... I didn't ignore them. Can't, Fine. you're right. The fool oh, okay, and his no, 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 no. puppet are gone. Except for a few. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Hmm. I've never watched Franks before, uh, Gifu. What is that? Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. Queenslayer, I would ask that you join us in battle, if only for the satisfaction of your presence enraging the enemy. Wow, I think they're going to call me Queenslayer the entire game. <laughs> if you wish to be counted amongst the glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I'm short a few scouts, short a few soldiers, short a few everything. I'm sure my brethren would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. And what are the Scarlet Corps? How will they be helping? I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the outer valley. The Oathbreakers have maintained a sizable force outside the Citadel. We need the Chorus's manpower to scour the region. Otherwise, the Oathbreakers will attack at our heels once we cross the Matani. I will be honored to help. The Iron Marshal salutes Graven Ass, then turns to leave the tent. It will be at the training grounds, ready in the soldiers. Find me there when you are ready. She pauses clear in her throat, and though I am loath to mention it, the Chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the Outer Valley on their own. Fifth Eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp, due east. Seek them out if you must. Canted arms. Never heard of that one either. Not only Frank is, I cannot believe this is not hentai. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Got it. Jewels and health potion. This battle report from Echo Call Crossing blames the failure of the assault on the village on the Scarlet Course. Apparently, the scouts failed to report critical intelligence about the enemy composition. On it. And this is Blood Moss, okay? The Archon of War lets out a long sigh as he surveys the maps and models splayed about his desk. He glances over his shoulder, making brief eye contact with you, furls his brow, and turns back to his contemplation. The first time you proclaimed an edict, you gave the enemy a suspicious amount of time to ready themselves. I'll chalk it up to excessive mercy for a backwards people. But when the edict is against your kin, that order you follow to the letter. Remain silent. Be gone from my tent. I tire of these endless distractions. Mm, all right. Oh, well. Okay. Yep. Unlock that. That's Jewel. Where is Barrack? Oh, that's where we can sleep if we wanted to. Off in the distance, you pick up the typical clamor of a military camp. The clang of sparring steel, the low rumble of stomping feet, and hushed murmurs emanating behind closed tents. Would you like to rest? No, nah, I'm good on resting. What is this? Eight days until the Day of Swords. Okay, so yeah, you've got, uh, there's a little bit of a time factor here. Sad the author died midway. But if anyone takes G Gundam seriously, I mean, one of the main characters called 
as a boxing football surfer gunslinging Gundam. Wow. <laughs> I was going to that was funny as shit. Can't do that. I am Lucia. This is Marcus. The disfavored soldier points to the armored man next to her. And you must be the fate binder. From under a helmet, you hear an audible scoff. We've been assigned to be babysit... Assigned to your hospitality. Marcus quickly interjects. While you remain on disfavored ground. If you should need a place to rest, we can make the necessary preparations. What can we do for you? Marcus, tell me about yourself. Not sure there's much to tell you. I trained at Fort Resolution. This is my first campaign, and I'm proud to be with the Legion. I was wounded at the Gates of Judgment, but Graven Nash's protection mended me good. I owe my life to him. Are you bragging that you let your guard down and took a spear to the gut? You really shouldn't boast about a filthy tearsman besting you in battle. Lucia rolls her eyes. You're just bitter that Lord Ash never seems to notice you. In all seriousness, I would take that spear again if it brought honor to the disfavored. Kairos knows we could use it. We are the elite fighters of the Northern Army, but somehow we still lack the Overlord's confidence. He shakes his head and sighs. Lucia, tell me about yourself. I do this. She unenthusiastically lifts up her heavy shield. And I do this. She mockingly stabs at the air with her spear. Lucia <laughs> shrugs. Playing Ulster is not my strong suit. Ignore my sarcasm. I've seen the Legion through my share of the campaign. After so much bloodshed, our pretenses of honor can wear me down. She turns a cautious eye your way. The North is my home, and I consider each and every one of the ironclad bastards to this camp to be family. You won't find another army where each member of the Phalanx is as beloved and cherished as the next. You seem handy with a weapon, Lucia. Aye, and if you ever want some pointers on how to use that weapon of yours, just let me know. She winks. Lucia, are you flirting with Tunan's faint binder? Relax, Marcus. There are plenty of camp slaves if I ever need to scratch an itch. <laughs> Although, through the visor of her helm, you notice Lucia's eyes roving up and down your body. If you ever need someone to warm your bedroll, let me know. I sleep in my armor. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> wow. How have your skills fared in battle against the Oathbreakers, Marcus? Every battle is a reminder of the Legion's superiority. The Oathbreakers have plenty of heart, but nothing to beat our northern values and Graven Ash's love. If you ever want to enjoy that feeling, I can spare you the time of day to cross iron. What's it like serving with the disfavored? In spite of our name, the Legion commands more honor than any military on the face of Territus. Unlike the Corps, there's tradition, discipline, teamwork, and unity of purpose. Marcus looks out across the camp. There aren't many of us, but it's better that way. We're a tightly knit family bound together by trust and glory. Accurate enough, Lucia shrugs. After seeing the disunity and bickering of the younger realm defenders, I feel lucky to be in the most agreeable legion of Kairos' host, even if we're not always the most efficient. If the legion boasts so much honor, why are they disfavored? Uh, I'm afraid insufficient re reputation. I'm afraid that isn't for me to say. Others around camp might be able to tell you more, but I don't freely discuss the great general's history to outsiders. But you'll say that it involves the great general, which is already a telling clue, idiot. <laughs> and drat, at least the Iron Marshal isn't with that air shot. I'll be washing my mouth out with wormwood. <laughs> Provides recoil dampener. People are always. Hmm. My right, boys, those 14 hour shifts are going to work themselves. <laughs> Take care, good fool. Have a good one. I say the whole chant in every episode. Did you abandon you too or just taking a break? I think I'm just taking a break, LT. I might circle back to it. But you know, it's not the type of game that I usually play. So we'll see if I end up circling back. Uh, Marcus, I'd like some training. Maybe? Of course, Fate Binder. Pounds it, armor and salute. Skill training. One-hand weapons. Two-handed weapons. I forgot the way this works. So wait, if I train, yeah, it's one. Huh. Ranks trainable this level. Four. This character's already trained the maximum number of times this level. Huh. Okay. And then let's see. What about uh Lucia? What does she train? One-handed weapons, dodge, ooh, and athletics. Interesting. All right, we're going to leave that alone for now. So we got them to a meager portion of game simmers in a large copper pot. Fragrant spices attempt to mask the potent smell of whatever creature they decided to cook. 
glory to the voices of Narat. Projecting his salutation for all to hear, the grinning blood chanter wraps his staff against the ground as you approach. Fate binder Joker, I presume. His smile quickly retreats, giving way to a sour scowl. I am bitter quip. I am here as the emissary of the Scarlet Corps. Oof, good luck, Gafu. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Skyrim training. Snorsen, what's going on, dude? How are you, man? Yeah, it's very similar to that for sure. Bitter Quip looks at you impatiently. What is it like working with a disfavored? He scoffs, looking away from you for a moment before sniffing and returning his attention to you. Reporting to the Iron Hag is an insult. She fought one duel for a title, one. Her leadership must be continuously proven, earned, and defended. Weakness should be bleed to the bottom of the army, not rise to the top. My assignment here is also an insult, but one I will bear for the good of the course. Bitter quips, sniffs the air, smiling with one side of his mouth. If only see with my own eyes the failure of the disfavored, that will be a fine day. What can you tell me of the Scarlet Chorus? The Chorus is the future of the tears. I feel only derision and pity for those who fear our inevitable ascension. Bitter Quip looks at you with a raised eyebrow. What in particular would you like to know? Tell me about the voices of Narat. He is Supreme Commander and Public Servant. He who sets us free but directs all. Bitter Quip smiles as he talks, his face turning flush. The voices of Narat is the epitome of what each of us can be. A magician without equal and the leader of uncountable numbers. The voices of the chorus are one, conquering, expanding, growing, changing, always stronger. Bitter Quip pounds his staff on the ground. Glory to the voices. Have you tried creating a spell yet? Yep. Uh, uh, I've created a couple of spells, but I haven't used them in combat yet. You see my comment about recommending Enchanted Arms? Enchanted Arms is an old game, much older than Demon Souls, but graphics are great for its time, but it's a turn-based RPG, but open world to an extent. Voice lines and dialogue are really great. Recommend. Interesting. Enchanted Arms. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. What is the story about? How did you come to join the Scarlet Chorus? The Doctrine of Strength speaks to me, and I answered its call, as did some of my arcane peers. I took to the chorus almost instantly. Unlike most, I cried not for the life of comfort lost to me. My magic invokes fear and terror, and I easily established my dominance over a pack in my early days in the chorus. If you're so curious about it all, bitter quip smiles, lifting an eyebrow, perhaps you should visit our camp and see for yourself. What is your role in the chorus? I am a blood chanter. My magic can turn the will of man and the tide of battle. I have held command for three years now, though being forced to keep an eye on the disfavored is not the reward I had envisioned for my service thus far. Sounds as if you really like the voices of the Narat. Bitter Quip blinks several times and scowls, saying nothing. <laughs> That's all for now. Nods at you as you depart. Mm, subterfuge. Um... All right, I'll see what that sigil does in a bit. What do you mean you haven't heard from him? Sevius. Fate Binder Joker, am I right? I'm Sevius, commander and third generation disfavored. Specifically, I'm Sevius the Younger. Some folks can't keep track. It's about guns. Oh, man, you went evil on your first run? <laughs> What's going on, Wander? Uh, it's the premise of the game after all. I still feel like the good ride was the best executed though. Uh, is it, it is the first time I played it. I think both definitely have merit. Hmm. Oh, fire enchanter. He uses fist to ounce to pounce his enemies with furious fire and then use the elements and cybernetic robots to do battle. Oh, wow. Interesting. That does sound like a unique game. Okay. The first Demon Souls wasn't good, can't you? The rank says commander, but lately I'm just organizing patrols and trying to stay out of the way. You should talk to Iron Marshal if you have something official that needs discussing. What is it you need? I overheard you asking that Earthshaker where their reinforcements have gone. Is there a problem? I'm afraid so. Radix, the head of the Earthshakers, was supposed to arrive with a group of his most competent spell slingers to help break this stalemate. I don't know what's holding up their arrival, and that worries me. If you are at all inclined to lend a hand, we could use some arcane support on our side. I could lend a hand. Could you? I know that Tanan's agents would, wouldn't fail us in a time of need. I'll mark the last known sight of our Earthshaker reinforcements on your map. Good hunting, Fatebinder. Why do you think the siege is delayed for so long? 
It should have been over real quick and simple. The first cohort arrived in the valley and went right for the kill. But that was before we knew the Vendrian guard had sages and that water witch on their side. A bigger problem is the Scarlet Chorus. They eagerly conscript the Vendrian guard, but I have no proof of this, but it seems they do very little to keep a watchful eye on these drafted tearsmen. They are often sent out on patrol, and we suspect they use that opportunity to escape back to the Vendrian guard. Every course conscript has a choice, life under Kairos or death under the army's boots. By all means, feel free to cut down those who choose the latter. We won't be offended. <laughs> Just so we don't mistake each other, I know what I'm saying carries an implication of treachery. I'm not making a formal accusation before Tunan's agent. I'm just voicing my gut opinion on the matter. The two armies haven't worked well together in years. Why do you think that is? Come on, Binder. Seems like asking why bees stink. The disfavored are only too eager to deliver Kairos' peace to the tears, while the Scarlet Chorus brings only mayhem in their wake. You can tell me the voice on the rod has a plan, and I'll take your word for it. But the chorus sure seems to blunder around, never moving with purpose as we do. I wonder if we've been fighting the same war, soldier. I've seen Ash yank his precious soldiers away for more battles than he's won. If you want to call that progress, be my guest. Unless we find a way to work as one, I fear that the Scarlet Chorus will step in um, front of Grave and Ash's strategies at every turn. As far as I'm concerned, it seems like the Voice of the Rat is here to amuse himself, while the rest of us are here to do our job. Dollars a trip. This is a game worthy of it. Absolutely. I rage quit on the old king. <laughs> I liked it, but the old king for me was uh, millennia on steroids. Hmm. Price two sticks. That covers very miss of an early 2000s game. <laughs> 2003 game. <laughs> the different sigils are very rare, need to be found in certain places or sold by certain merchants. I had to look up the internet where how to find. Yeah, that's why I've been buying them at every vendor I come through. Definitely part, love this game and your content. What's going on, Epidermis? Glad you've been enjoying the content, dude. Good to see you on the stream. I like Demon Souls did have some BS parts, and the punishment system was way too harsh. Who's that must help on death in a game where you die a lot? I don't know. Yeah, stuff like that is why I don't play those games. <laughs> hey, tell me about yourself. Not much to tell. My father was Sevius the Elder. His father was Sevius I of his name, lead drill master of Ash's first Iron Guard, back when they were the Bronze Guard. I was born into the Legion, and with any hope, I'll die in the Legion. The rest you will hopefully hear about when the storytellers immortalize me. <laughs> Lore, he was in the Bronze Guard? So your family must have been with Ash since before he was with Kairos. Aye, you know your history. Sevius nods with gusto. The blood goes back that far, not the memories, as I only ever knew my grandfather. My, my father, my grandfather was just a legend, one of Ash's best warriors back before the disfavored were reforged in iron. He shrugs. I'm proud of my heritage, but I try not to brag. There are folks who love the Legion every bit as much as I do, but they lack the same pedigree. You should be proud of your pedigree. Thanks, but I try not to think about it too fondly. If anything, every time I screw something up, I wish I wasn't dragging the family name through mud along with me. Bronze Guard? Well, his day and age was a century ago, and they didn't have Kairos' modern luxuries like iron. So back then, the Guard's General's inner, center, inner Council was known as the Browns Guard. Back to my other questions. Farewell. Oh, it's not going to... Oh, they're just having a general conversation, okay. This card is bursting with fresh food and useful goods. We can make it in this area. Sekiro is the worst. <laughs> um. Ah, Barrett. Okay. I think this is a good place to go ahead and stop. We've been playing for quite some time. I'm getting hungry. What is this? Eat it. Oh, edict of execution, which includes increasing my resolve. Uh, I'm uh, getting sleepy and I'm getting hungry and I think we've been streaming for quite some time, right? Yep, a little over four hours. That's a good uh, uh, amount of time. So that is the first look at tyranny. 
I'm a big fan of Tyranny. Absolutely looking forward to playing through this game. So hopefully you all enjoy the stream as well. Like I said, we are going to do a full stream of it. So if you've been enjoying it, hopefully you'll stay with me for the full ride. When we get through with this, most likely we'll be heading into Baldur's Gate 3. But for now, I'm going to go back, uh, uh, chill my wife for a bit, get something to eat, and I will see you all in the next stream. Take care. Bob, what's going on, man? Sorry, you came right at the end. Uh, I played this before, but I played it when it first came out, which obviously was years and years ago. So I remember very little bit, little about it. So it's kind of like playing it all over again. It's been nice. Kunshu, take care, man. Always good to see you on the stream. Dagon, have a good one. Oh, yeah, I'm totally down for a trip through uh, through Tyranny Memory Lane. That's awesome to hear, Wanderlust. Good to see you on the channel. Have a good one. Take care, Snorson. Bye, three. Always good to see you, man. Take care, everyone. Yep. Glad you're able to make it, Vandal. Nice, Sloan. Take care. Bye, Philip. Awesome. Take care, Bob. Always good to see you, man.